Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. Can you hear me? Uh, please let me know if you can hear me. Let me, try, let me use my phone. Hi, Dola. Okay. Oh, great. Great. I think you can hear me. Perfect. So let's just get right into it. Sorry, I had a little bit of technical um, difficulty. <laughs> Uh, my name is Ade Dola Paula Wow, the Programs Coordinator at University for Good. I'm your annual for today. <laughs> Welcome to the Digital Skills Workshop. Um, thank you so much for joining. I commend you for joining today's workshop, giving yourself the chance to learn and be better at what you're currently doing or what you're passionate about. So here's a little task for you. I want you to go to the chat box, tell us your name and where you're joining from. You could even add what you're currently doing on the UNOS, you could meet your um, maybe a co-founder or an, your employer in the chat box. So let us do that really fast. Um, why is we prepared to start off? Okay, thank you. Thank you so much for um, joining in once again and giving you a chance to learn. Um, so um, as we, you know, technology continues to shape every aspect of our lives, you know, from communication to commerce, to education, to healthcare. You'd agree with me that only those who possess strong digital skills will be better equipped to navigate and thrive in a digital landscape. So whether you're a student preparing for the workforce or you're a professional looking to advance your career or you're an entrepreneur or whatever you are in the um, job market or in the world at large, investing in digital skills is very, very important to a lot of opportunities and thriving basically, not even thriving in your career alone, but thriving as a person, right? And it's not every day you get to have four esteemed guests who have a thriving career in the digital space. I mean, like, if you check the lineup of speakers that we have today, there are really renowned personalities in the digital space that you would be learning from. So you'd be learning essential skills you need to thrive in the digital age. And if I were you, I'd get a pen, a book, and be ready to take notes. So if you are yet to do that, I'd, I advise you get your pen and your book right now. I'll give you a few seconds to do that. All right, are you ready? It's a workshop for a reason. So it's really going to be a lot engaging and very, very practical. On the panel today, we have Debbie White, who is a UI UX designer at Manafa, Saudi Arabia. We have Treasure Ovure, who is a creative and content marketer. We have Kelvin Umechuku, who is the co-founder and CEO at Bompa. And we have Fauzia Damonle, who is the communications manager at University for Good. So here's how we are going to do it. Each guest speaker would go first, like would go one at a time. So be prepared, be prepared to learn, be prepared to take notes, prepare your questions. So there's going to be a Q&A after every session. You are in for your right, you are in to, um, to learn, so prepare to learn and prepare to ask questions. So um, first off, um, Davio would be starting us off. I'm going to be reading this bio now. So this is something I advise as I read the bio of speakers. I used to advise um, people to be attentive, to listen to the, um, the bios of wh whoever I'm reading, because there you get to learn, you get to, okay, this, some, this is the person that I'm going to be listening to, this is what he has achieved so far. So I'm in to learn from this person, right? So Debbie White is a brand and product designer currently based in Saudi Arabia. He works as a UI UX designer at Manafa, where, sorry if I mispronounced that, <laughs> where is shaping the future of fintech. Hi, Debbie. Can you hear me? Are you here? Yes, I'm, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Thank you so much for joining. So, Debbie here would be sharing Amazing. essential skills for tech employability. All right, so you have the floor, Debbie. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, I think your name is Ade Dolapo, right? Yes, it is. Okay, uh, thank you so much. Uh, and um, good morning, good afternoon, everyone uh, from Saudi. I 
I want to start by saying thank you for inviting me on the space to talk about or talk on this uh, very important uh, topic. I really, I really like the topic because a lot of things is happening today in regards to new tools, softwares coming out there. And a lot of designers are, are kind of uh, scared. They are like uh, scared about their opportunity in the job market and this is something that I, I'm interested in talking about. So the topic has to do with um, enhancing um, the possibility of someone landing opportunities with digital tools in the job market. I'm going to start, I don't know if I'll be talking on all three, because I know we have, in regards to productivity, we have um, a job, and then the final one is in building capacity. So can I proceed? Awesome. All right. So I uh, I didn't I didn't create a slide. So I'm I'm talking from my experience as a UI UX designer, and I'll be I'll be talking. I'll my topic would be based on my niche. All right. So if you're a UI UX designer, then I think you should grab a note, like she advised. Uh, so one thing that has happened within the course of the year, um, let's say for over one year now, is We've seen new tools like the AI tools handling certain rules. Now, there are many rules that I would tell you for sure that people do not fill up anymore because they've been automated with this AI. Or the AI has helped reduce the job capacity. But this is not to scare you, okay? Because I know when we talk about this, people start becoming worried. So usually, people companies would require the assistance or services of let's say 10 people in a particular uh, department to carry out certain job. And right now, because of the introduction of AI and all of this, uh, the, the positions have dropped a bit. And I'm, I'm just, I don't want to sugarcoat the words, but I want to tell you things that would help you stand out. And that's why I'm here. So standing out in the job market um, requires a lot of understanding. Now I'm going to take it to the tools, digital tools you need to understand as a UI UX designer that would give you an edge why you're trying to increase your productivity and also increase your chances of landing job opportunities. So some of the tools that I'm going to mention are tools that I use day to day and some other ones are tools that I've used in my previous role. Um, so I'm going to start with the productivity tools. Now, many people apply for roles every single day and they don't have sort of this uh, um, edge of landing opportunities and most of them are doing the right thing. But it's because there are certain keywords that are being put into these systems that when you apply for a job, it's being analyzed and those keywords are standing out in other people's CV more than yours. And that's because you're not you're not aware of them, and you're not uh, you've not really used them. So, or maybe you've used them, but you're not putting them in your CV. So, one of the major tools I'm going to talk about is called Monday. Monday is a tax management tool. It's a tool that helps like your team lead allocate tax to you, and with that, you're able to track whatever tax that you're doing. And not forget, because at times you may forget. And even though you use the note, um, note app on your mobile phones, you may still forget that, oh, I'm supposed to complete this. But with Monday, you're able to like uh, automate your tax, know the deadline, because you'd even be giving, um, you'll, be, you'll be prompted when these tax are supposed to be done and when uh, they are close to the deadline. So Monday helps you do that. Currently, I use ClickUp uh, for my tax management tool, and that's a new tool that I've introduced at my place of work. So I use ClickUp now to like manage my tax, know what I'm supposed to do. If I'm in a meeting and something arises, I will just go on ClickUp and put it up there. And there's one very good feature I like about ClickUp. It has like a, a me mode. That me mode is because it's a, it's a dashboard of tax for all team members. So if you go to the me mode, you're able to see just your own tax. So that would reduce um, 
the confusion because you might find a lot of tax on the board and you feel like oh this is overwhelming so you want to reduce it to just your own tax so that's one reason why i like or i love clickup now i've mentioned two of the tools i use i used monday before before clickup was introduced i've used asana i've used trello so these are some of the tools you need to familiarize yourself with um even though you're working on like a freelance project tell the people or oh, i want to I want to create a tax management where I'm able to show you my progress. So whatever progress you're making, um, you break it into milestones on that tax management tool. And the owner, the brand owners, the developers, whoever is on the team, the stakeholders, they can they can see it and also track your, your progress on that particular project. So some of these tools are if I'm to recommend to you, I'll tell you use ClickUp because I've seen the interface of the rest of them. Asana is a bit complicated, but ClickUp is really good. But you don't know what company you'll be going to and you don't know what tools they use. So I would say explore all of these tools and just see which one works for you at the end of the day. There are other tools that uh, you can utilize. Um, and it's when it comes to handoff, because after designing the UIs, we have to hand it over to the developers. And this is where many people feel like we just arrange it within the Figma file and we're done. But the truth is you there's a tool for that that helps you hand off those designs to developers and be able to also um, leave comments on certain screens that you feel like, oh, this one requires a bit of explanation and all of that. This tool is called Zeppelin. Now, Zeppelin is a tool that helps you hand off uh, your UI screens to developers. By using this tool, you're able to communicate directly with developers. You're able to answer their questions. You're able to see comments from them and all of that. And they're able to see all of these screens and they can find the different calculations you know when we talk about calculations we're talking about the width the height the size they can find all of these things including the design elements the design component as well they can find everything and export it easily within zeppelin so that's one tool i would appreciate i would recommend for you guys to use there are several other tools that can boost your productivity but these tools are some of the major ones i use day to day um they obviously there's Slack and there's other workspace. Slack is a workspace where uh, you communicate with your teammates, you get information, you share each other, uh, but it's like a messaging tool within companies. So if you don't know how to use Slack, try to create one maybe with accountability partners, maybe have one or two accountability partners. And with that, you're able to use Slack for a while and understand how Slack works. Slack may sound very easy for many people, but it's really advanced. If you look more into it, it becomes simpler by the day. It's not just about messaging. There are certain automations that can be done within Slack. So you have to also pay attention to that. Now, when it comes to the job uh, uh, phase, um, you're looking for a job. Many people are looking for jobs today and um, most of them may not get those jobs within the next three months. And I'm not prophesying, all right, but I'm, I'm saying this because you're not exposed to certain information. So when the first impression as someone who have also hired people for companies, one of the first impression is your CV. So when people see your CV, they're able to tell what kind of person you are, even though you might not be that person, but they're able to give some kind of opinions about who this person is. Is this person organized? Is this person within our, uh, understands our culture? Does this person use the tools that we use? Or is this person someone we would have to train more? Because companies today, trust me, don't want to train people that much. I'm not saying they don't want to train at all, but they don't want to train someone that much from the scratch. They, they want you to get a certain level of understanding or experience within your niche or within certain tools that they use, and then they can offer some guidance. And those guidance will not be more than a week. But if you've not used those tools before, then it takes months to train the person and that could incur costs for the company because the time you use to be delivering your tax, they would use it to be training you. So um, 
you have to be very careful with your CV. Now, when crafting your CV, under tools, most of the things that you write in your CV is very important. But you see, the work experience, those captions or explanations you give under the work experience and the tools is very important. Now, there are certain keywords they put into the system, the ATS system, that analyze those those keywords and put you or shortlist you for the next uh, stage, which is like the interview stage. And this is where you have to put in the tools. So things like saying, why working in my previous role, um, using SOSO2, -so I was able to achieve this, that, that, you know, brings in those keywords into the explanation of your work experience. And work experience is basically, for people that don't know, is basically where you've worked before. And I know somebody will be asking themselves, how about if I've not worked somewhere before and it's just my first opportunity? I always advise that you land yourself one freelance gig. I'm not saying a job, but one freelance gig or work for a friend before you go into applying for roles. Because trust me, your learning phase is not the same as an actual job. You get kicked out very shortly if you're not delivering on the job and you need some level of confidence. And that's why I'm advising always try to look for a friend that has like a business that you can brand. Try to look for, try to land one freelance gig because while you're learning or doing your self projects or personal projects, it's not going to be the same when you're working with a client. A client would have iterations. They would talk to you in a manner that you, you would not like. That is where you start to build your confidence. You start to build your personality. You start to build um, your business ethics so that when you speak to these people, you speak to them in certain manner. And yeah, we all get to a point where you, you feel this. Trust me, you're going to you let emotions take the front seat. So, but those are the times that you get to build on these different points. And so when you're working in an actual job, where you work full time, you'll be able to bring in this different experience into the job and you'll be able to go through the day-to-day -day, uh, tasks. So that is how you can get a work experience. So once you work there or you work for a freelance, like the project lasted for like three months, put it on the work experience and just state everything you did. Oh, while working on this project, I was able to use um, Asana to delegate my tasks and follow through the process. And after working on this, we moved it to Zeppelin and tracking this project, I got so so and so metrics. This is just a rough sketch or a rough um, yeah, explanation of what you should put down there. But you could make more research and fine tune it into something that would be useful for you. So when you have all of this within your um Within your CV, you have a higher chance of someone clicking on the portfolio portfolio link on the CV because that's basically where you want to point that user to. So understanding that you can use these tools to, uh, to position yourself better for these opportunities would really help you when um, applying for roles because these tools are very important for certain companies that you apply to. Not many companies know them, but Companies that know what they are doing use a lot of these tools, even more than I have explained. And that's it for jobs. For building capacity, learning never ends. And many people would agree with me that learning never ends. You leave the university and you feel like, oh, I'm done with my BSc, I'm done learning. The truth is, you're not, you're not done learning. Um, you would still learn. You would still write. Many people would drop their pen and say, I'm not writing again. You still write. You find yourself having to take online courses or having to take professional course uh, certificates. And most people or some people rather push for that to doing their master's or doing a second degree. Some after their master's will still go in for PhD. All of this is in order for them to build more capacity within their fields. And uh, I don't know if many of you know this, but the more uh, the more professional certificates you get in certain organization, the higher your chances of being, um, of, of, um, what's it called, what's the word? Of being, uh, uh, what's, what's the word now? It's, it's more like giving you a new position. The word is leaving my head. So they, they would, probably just upgrade your position or just give you a new 
a completely new position. So maybe you were a junior designer and because of certain courses that you've taken, certain boot camps that you've attended, they just um, upgrade your, your position and you just suddenly become a senior designer or become the team lead. So these things happen and it comes from a place of continuous learning. If you're not learning uh, constantly and you're leaving yourself with the old knowledge, you lose out on the trends because trends come out every year. Like now we have so many tools. If you're not using them, even ChatGPT is an amazing tool to use. I mean, I sometimes I call her my baby because there are times I'm lacking certain informations and I go there and understanding how to use it can help you enhance whatever problem you're facing at the job with a certain task. It can honestly help you. So understanding how to use these tools can also help you build that capacity by taking courses or going for certain boot camps. Initially in my career, I don't use to advise boot camps, but experience grows by the time you keep experiencing new things. So for me, experience is based on what you've seen, what you've heard, and what you've done. So once you've gone through this process, you see new things and you're able to give certain advice based on those things that you've seen. So if you find a good bootcamp that you can go for, go for it because every time you join a new section, you learn something new from someone. It's more like someone learning from a particular lecturer. You only get that knowledge. But when you learn from several people or several lecturers or several tutors, then you get several perspectives to certain things. I could explain introduction to uh, um, product design in a, in my own way, and someone else will explain it in a different way. Doman will explain it in a more experienced way. And by getting all of these different explanations, you're able to harness more within your your uh, your knowledge, and knowledge brings a lot of opportunities. Trust me, it, what you know would bring you more things, and that's honestly what I'm going to say about this. And to summarize, uh, because I think I'm far, I'm almost at the time. To summarize, I'd say building, uh, increasing your productivity has to do with a few tools. And some of the tools I've mentioned, if you're just joining, is Zeppelin for handoff, uh, Monday, Trello, Asana, ClickUp. These tools are for managing your tax. And then we have Slack. We have other workspace. I think Google has a workspace, but Slack mostly, um, which is for messaging and communication within your, your team, your company as a whole, which is broken down into different departments as well. Um, I talked about jobs. So understanding these tools can help improve uh, or give you chances of landing opportunities because certain companies rely on certain keywords when, uh, when um, looking for new talents to join their company, uh, their organization. So putting all of this in the key as keywords into your CV, uh, when it's analyzed, can shortlist you for the next phase. And then for building capacity, I'd say take more courses, join more boot camps, share your knowledge on the internet, and just be just be at the forefront of new information. Um, new trends come out, be there to grab it. It's not that you would always use them, but it's best to understand that there's new trends, there are new updates, and you can find this by using tools like LinkedIn, X, formerly uh, Twitter, there are certain articles you could also be part of, and you just get these informations from the industry leaders. And with that, I want to thank you all for your attention, and I'm now open to questions. Hi, Dolapo, we can't hear you.
Hello. Um, thank you so much. Um, I think that Lola Paul dropped off for a bit because we couldn't hear her. Um, thank you so much. Um, uh, people on YouTube are already thanking you a lot. Um, that's great. Thank you, sir. Thanks for the information. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thanks for the insightful information. Um, some people are also asking for the tools to be listed but we've pinned it um in the chat so i hope that you can see it now um so it's time to start taking questions if you have any questions for him it'll be nice that you drop your comments in the chat box right now so that he can take them um so somebody is asking how can someone get to learn and land a freelance job hmm. Okay, so learn and land a freelance job. Most times, um, new designers focus more on the job than the learning. And I like to emphasize um, on learning. Trust me, you need to learn a lot. There was a time I said, learn more than you practice or study more than you practice. It's very important because when you, when you, uh, when you learn, um, you get to understand more about that field. You get to learn new things. Uh, it's just like watching a movie. When you rewatch that movie, you always see new things that you missed the first time you watched that movie. So I always say, learn more and focus on learning. Then when you're done, you can never be done actually, but give yourself at least six months to learn. And once you've gone through that, that six months, then it's time for you to start implementing what you've been taught or what you've been taught during a particular course or a boot camp or whatever school you went to. You can now start implementing it. Now, to land opportunities, it's not based on what I would just tell you because most times people feel like when we share this information, you just land an opportunity the next day. It's possible for some based on the level where they've gotten in their career and for others, it will take some time. But this is something I would do if I were you. I'll take a lot of time learning and understanding that skill. You go to school, to university, and you spend four years, and you're not thinking about job because you want to equip yourself with all the knowledge. Not and you don't you come out without even having all the knowledge. So I, what I'll do is spend more time learning, and then I'm going to go in for practicing. And when I practice, I'm going to post. So I call it SPP, so you study, practice, and post. The more you're consistent with posting, I'm going to use the comedians, for instance. You see a comedian, he has been in the business of doing comedy for years, and they do it like consistently. The likes of uh, Lai Wasabi, he's always putting out new content. And that's because he knows what he's pursuing. He's not just wanting to make you laugh and all of that. He wants certain opportunities. He wants certain partnerships, collaborations, ambassadorial positions. He wants all of that. He wants to make more money. So what does he do? He has to be consistent on the internet. And that's what you have to do. You have to be consistent, be consistent like a, a crazy person, always show up in the faces of people. It's more like someone joining a new school and you're just quiet. Nobody is, you, you have a lot of things to offer. But well, you're just quiet because you're in a new school. You don't want to talk to people. You don't want people to know you. It takes months, years, and before you know you're done with that school, nobody knows you. But a different person will come to that school, and people will tag that person as busybody, but the person knows exactly what he or she is doing. May not know at times, but you have to be in the faces of people. Go introduce yourself, connect with certain people. Just be on the internet. Trust me, you want to be on the internet, especially X and for those that don't know, Twitter and then LinkedIn. Be on those both platforms. Learn more. Keep learning. Keep practicing. Keep posting your stuff. And that's honestly what you have to do. 
trust me, that's honestly how, what you have to do. There's a platform called Behance. Um, Behance was where I landed my first job at Saudi, the one that took me out of the country. Um, they found me there and they wanted to hire me and I went through a process and at the end, I got the job. So you want to be on Behance. For Behance, when uploading your projects, it's a platform that we call the portfolio platform. That's where you upload projects that you've done. Now, there are two types of projects you can upload. One is the single shots, the ones that you just design, one screen, and you just post. Those ones, you can post them on Twitter. You can post them on LinkedIn and Instagram. If you're on Facebook as well, you can post them there. But on Behance, you post only case studies. Not that you don't have the avenue to post those single shots, but I always advise post case studies because that's where many employers go to. And when they go there, they are trying to understand the thought process, the design process of that particular person. They're not wanting to see the beautiful designs. Most businesses do not need a beautiful design to succeed. And I've learned this recently. All right, you see a very ugly design, but it's making a lot of revenues for that company. And then you bring in something new and then it's dropping off the the, the business users or the, the people using that particular product. So you need to understand these things. And it comes from being able to relate your design process to someone on the internet without the person even having to be there with you while you're working on those projects. So you take the person through a, a journey or through a story and you're saying, okay, this was how I started the project. This was how I ended the project. This was some of the issues I faced while working on this project. And you finish it. You build that case study and you upload it on Behance. Trust me, there are a lot of opportunities on Behance. I've landed several opportunities on Behance and also on Twitter. So even on Twitter, while you post your stuff, don't just post them and just say follow, follow for follow, like and comment. No. Be intentional about it. Talk about what you've done. Briefly just analyze what you've done. People don't like to read lengthy stuff on Twitter. So you need to find a way or find a, a touch point for your captions. So break it down in a way that people are able to understand what you've done on that project and just show the beauties that you've created and consistently do it. Now, consistency is not you showing up every single day with new designs, but it's showing up doing something so today you might be talking about your one lesson you took maybe this lesson oh it was it was not easy it was tough or oh, i learned new stuff yeah have you guys heard about this you're you're building community you may not know but you're building community and then um while you're doing that some days you post your designs and trust me opportunities will come when you finally landed your first client on the internet because there are people that will be watching you to see how consistent you are. Then you can um, you can now go into, sorry, the, the messages that was popping up just <laughs> distracted me. So when you've landed your first client, you can then start applying for jobs. At that time, just start applying for jobs. And like I said, I mentioned some tools within my niche so if you're within my niche, start practicing with those tools. Those tools also work for brand designers as well. And just ensure that whatever you're putting into your CV is intentional. Don't just put random things and just say, oh, I want to have a CV. So ensure you have those things in your CV and it's going to honestly help you land a better opportunity. I'll go straight to the next one because we have less than two minutes to round up. Um, hello, everyone. We're starting it. Uh, uh, you mentioned APIs for CV. What is the best way to figure out specific ones for the company being applied to? I did mention APIs. Uh, maybe the person meant apps. Um, um, you you cannot obviously you cannot. Those are uh, those are confidential informations that companies keep within themselves. So you would not you would not know. All right, you can just apply and be lucky that they use it, all right? It's not a do or die affair. Just understand some management tools. And some companies will be curious to know what management tool this is. They will want you on board so that probably you can train them. Maybe one of the tools they are using is not that effective. They will want you to come in and show them how that 
tool that you know how to use work and then you can take it up from there. And you send a remote job link that is available to us in Nigeria, remote job link. Uh, there is, so I think that's the last one. There is, I don't have a remote job link. Um, places you can find jobs are Glassdoor. Um, if you go on Glassdoor, you find a lot of jobs. You can filter it based on countries or regions that you want to work at and try to un read the job description so that you understand the responsibilities and the requirements for that rules. Don't just see application for um, hiring UI designer and you just apply. Try to read those things so that you know, am I within this level? Do I have these capabilities and all of that? Um, other platforms like LinkedIn. We use LinkedIn every day, but we don't know that. There's a lot of jobs there. You can find jobs on LinkedIn. You can also find jobs on Behance. Behance is spelled B-E-H-A-N-C-E dot -E net. So if you go on Behance.net, you go to the Jobs tab and you find a lot of jobs there. These are three platforms I can recommend. And yeah, that's it for me. Thank you. Thank you so much, Divio. Thank you. Absolutely amazing. Thank you for answering the question beautifully. So uh, why, before we move past this other person, this is something that I'll ask you to do. So quickly go on um, social media, share your take out from this session from Divio. You can tag us in Google for Google, tag the Nicola, and tag Divio. Because imagine Davey will be sharing your content, let's say on LinkedIn, meaning that your content would, would uh, appear on more people's timeline. Right, and who knows, you could just get value donation from there. So do that, and um, I'll be introducing our next guest. So our next guest is Treasure Okure. She's going to be hosting, this se hosting a session on digital skills for curators. So I'm going to be reading our bio so you get a feel of, of um, who our guest is. So Treasure is a content marketer and storyteller, bringing ideas to life and helping companies achieve their marketing goals. She currently works at Stella, where she creates engaging content and facilitates projects to drive product awareness. Beyond her professional endeavors, she is a lifestyle content curator and writer. In her blog, The 20 Something Newsletter, she offers valuable insights on topics that resonate with younger demographics. Treasure is a writer whose work spans fiction and creative non fiction tales that explores the coming of age experience. In her blog as well, which is read by over 5,000 people. She offers valuable insights on topics that resonate with a younger demographic. Hi, Treasure. How are you? Fine. Hi. Hello, Dolapo. Hello, everyone. Um, good morning. It's an honor and a delight to be here with you guys today. Absolutely amazing to have you on board as well. Um, so you'll be sharing on um, digital skills for curators personal branding and content writer for beginner tech talent. Yeah, yeah yes. so you have the flow. Thank you. So uh, can I share my screen? I'd like to share my uh, screen. I created yeah. a presentation slide. Okay, wonderful. Oh, um, nice. All right. Okay, it says that it's disabled though. I can't share my screen. Oh, give me a minute. Okay. Okay. I think I can do that now. All right. Can you see my screen? Yeah, I can. Wonderful. Um, okay, so today we're going to be talking about personal branding and content creation for beginner tech talents. Um, this is a topic that really resonates with me because I'm a beginner tech talent in a lot of ways. And I know that personal branding is something that many of us care about, right? So, um, so yeah, let's just dive into it. Um, thank you so much once again, Ingressive for Good for having me. Um, yeah, so next slide. Um, yeah, one second. So um, like Dolapo said, my name is Treasure Kure. I am a content marketer. I work at Sela. Before Sela, I worked at Founders Connect. Um, I'm also a lifestyle content creator on Instagram. I also have a blog. Um, called Doing Something Newsletter, where I write weekly pieces for younger people. And I'm a final year law student, so I'm still a student. Um, just go to the next slide. Um, yeah, so in this lesson, um, in this um, workshop, we're going to cover how to build a personal brand, right? What's a personal brand? Why do you need a personal brand? This is so important because we live in a digital age and 
being able to connect online with others is so important. There's so many benefits that we're going to get into in today's class. Um, we're going to also talk about how to tell your story, right? How to tell your story. As an individual interacting in this digital space, how do you tell your story in a way that resonates with people? Um, and we're going to talk about content creation 101. Just a few things that you should look out for when you're trying to create content. So we're going to start with um, this picture. I know that I can't see the comments, but I'd like you guys to think about these two people, um, Elon Musk and Steve Jobs, right? Um, they are both technocrats. I mean, Steve Jobs is late now, but they are both technocrats. Um, they are both inventors in a way, but there are certain things that set them apart, right? One would say, um, I don't know, I can't see the comments. I really wanted this to be interactive, but I want to know what people are saying. Like, what do you think sets people apart? Dolapo, can you please help me? Okay, um, the comments are on uh, YouTube. I'm going to try and copy as much here so you can see them. Okay, I just want to know what people are saying, like if they if they can think about the ways in which these, these people are different, right? Me, I would say that, um, for instance, Steve Jobs always wore black. He always wore a black turtleneck. And for some reason, that has inspired a lot of um, tech founders as well to wear black turtlenecks. Um, Elon Musk has a more diverse fashion, right? So he dresses in different ways. I'll say that Steve Jobs had a more um, refined personality in terms of how he presented himself, um, sorry, Steve Jobs, rather. Elon Musk is a little bit more explosive, a little bit more vibrant, one would say. Um, do you get? So, like, they have things about them that set them apart, despite the fact that they are both founders and they have both done considerable good for humanity. Even though, I mean, some people might consider that um, debatable, but yes, they have both done considerable good for humanity. So that's something to um, keep in mind. Then the next slide, I have these two people. This is Rema and this is Shali Poppy, right? I think they are both from the same state and they are both musicians. But then if you guys actually think about it, these two people are very, very different in terms of their music, right? The kind of music that they make quite different in terms of their branding as well. I mean, that's what we are referring to, right? The way these two people brand themselves. Um, I'll say that Rema is a little bit more... Um, his music and his vibe seems to tailor more towards an international audience. While, while Charlie Poppy gives me for the people vibes, you get. So if you think about it, despite the fact that both guys come from the same state, both guys are musicians, they have this youthful, vibrant energy. There are still certain things that when you look at them, you say, oh, Rema can do this. I don't think Charlie Poppy can do this. Or, oh, Charlie Poppy can do this. I don't think Rema can do this, you get. So there are just things that set them apart. People like to say the same about Asha K and Shei vibes as well. Um, Coke and pepsi right they are both coca like colas but then some people prefer one so strongly even though i personally think that they taste the same you get so they're just certain things that will give you clues as to the fact that branding matters right two things can be can seem very very similar but then the way people are going to engage or interact with it will be very different and that's why we're here and that's why branding matters so um to the next slide so what is a personal brand? A personal brand is a sum of all the experiences, all the skills, all the interests and values that differentiate you from others, right? So like I said, experiences, skills, interests, and values that differentiate you from others. And personal branding as a verb is a process of defining and promoting what you stand for as an individual. Jeff Bezos is known to have said that personal brand is what people say about you when you're not in the room. So in a way, it feels like a personal brand becomes your reputation. It becomes what people think of when they see you. If they see, for instance, if I see like a black and white post as I'm scrolling through my tail, the first person that comes to my mind is probably Salem King because he's always branded himself as with black and white. Do you understand? So a personal brand is what people say about you when you're not in the room. Oh, she's too loud. Oh, she's funny. Oh, do you understand? That is your personal brand. And so as individuals who are in the digital space and who want to take advantage of the digital space in a way that really, really benefits us, we need to be mindful of our personal brands. We need to be mindful of all the things that we're putting out there, of all the ways in which 
the way we present ourselves is going to connect back to people. I'm not saying that you should care about what people say, but yes, you should actually care about what people say, especially if you want to build something for yourself as a young tech talent. So let's go to the next slide. So why should you have a personal brand, right? Um, the first reason I have here is that the world is now a digital village and town criers hold the power. Mm? It helps you to define and own and shape your narrative. If you don't tell people, this is who I am, they can project anything on you. If you don't tell people, this is what I stand for, they can just, you know, just treat you anyhow. Do you understand? So being able to refine who you are and what you care about and project this, make posts about it. For instance, you're a designer and you're making posts about your design um, journey would make people think, oh yeah, this is a designer. If they're thinking or if they're looking for a designer, they can say, oh, I know this babe. She posts about design, do you understand? So I'm going to reach out to her, do you get? So because of how the world is, because now our primary mode of communication is online, because this is the biggest way in which we can reach the widest amount of people, we need to be able to define and own and shape our own narrative. The second reason is that having a personal brand increases your visibility and opens you up to opportunities for influence and impact. This is so important, right? Because I mean, if you're in your house, you only know your mom, maybe you know your classmates, but then you, you don't know the entire world. You don't know the entire world. You're not um, connected to them unless you come online and unless you let people know that, hello, hello, my name is Treasure. I'm a content marketer. This is my work. These are things I have done, right? And these are things I can do for you. Do you get? And that's what having a personal brand helps you do. For instance, I'll use myself as an example. Um, I'm a content marketer, but um, a few months ago, I decided to double into branding, like um, graphic branding for businesses. It was not even anything serious. It was like I had work. So at my, my previous job, um, we had a new media outfit. And I thought to myself, oh, it'd be nice to brand this thing. I want to like curate how it's going to look. I want to curate how everything is going to be like. So in order for me to do that, I'm just going to post about it. So it was very, very casual. I just started making tweets on, um, on Twitter, just detailing the entire process. I was learning everything on the job. I watched YouTube videos. I was doing the trial and error publicly. Do you understand? I was just doing it for myself and for my own enjoyment. And then a few months down the line, someone reaches out to me and says, oh, hi, Treasure. I came across your thread on Twitter where you created the branding for this media product, right? And I would like to do something similar for my own. Can I please pay you? Do you get that way? That my vis It has increased my visibility. Me putting that thing online has increased my visibility and has given me an opportunity to earn more and to put my, my work further out there. Do you get And that's because the process of me putting my content out there right, relates to my personal brand and people can see that and connect with it and give me more opportunities. So in a way, I'll say that a personal brand is just the gift that keeps on giving. It's like a tree, right? The more you feed it, the more fruits will come out of it. Do you get So very, very important for you to have a personal brand for that reason. And of course, influence and impact, very, very important. A personal brand allows you to teach people it allows you to educate people. It allows, it allows you to learn from people, right? It allows you to touch lives, really, because we don't just live for ourselves, believe it or not. You might think, oh, I'm doing this tech thing because I want money. But yes, beyond money, once you have gotten the money, you start to think, what else? What next? What, what else can I do, right? How can I help other people who are in tech, who are struggling, right? Those are things that care, that matter to us as human beings. And having a personal brand, being, for instance, someone like PCTME, who's always teaching people uh, marketing, that gives her the opportunity to influence and impact the lives of people. So that's another reason why you should have a personal brand. And then it connects you with like-minded people, right? It gives you community. So me, when I started learning marketing, I was like, oh, who can I learn marketing from, right? I came online, I realized that, oh, there were so many marketing communities. There was Tech Marketers Hub, there was Contech, there was Non-Tech in Tech. And those were people who, or businesses who had been, that have been created by people that wanted to like impact on the marketing community. And I joined those, do you understand? So me saying, hello, I'm a marketer, would allow other people who are marketers to be like, hello, me too, I'm a marketer too, right? And then they come together and then you learn from each other. And you can say, oh, I worked in this place. So if you're applying, do this, 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 this. Or, oh, um, I saw this post that you made. I think you can do this, 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 this. It's so important, right? To project who you are and what you are online because that those are the kind of opportunities that it will give you. And finally, it's a great fallback plan, right? Let's not lie. We know how, um, what's the word? 
the tech industry can be a little volatile sometimes. We have seen the layoffs. There was this massive layoff that happened in 2022 when so many people left um, Twitter, right? And I was just seeing tweets upon tweets upon tweets. So we know that employment is not always a guarantee, right? And so in the event that you lose a job, having a personal brand can be like a cushion, right? So you know that, oh, you can still earn from the content that you make online. You can still earn from the opportunities that you make online. If you have digital products, right, that you have created, you can still make money from them, have passive income, get invited to opportunities. Other people can see you and be like, oh, I don't think Treasure is still working with these people. Let's hit her up. You understand? She does very good content or she is very valuable. I like the kind of things that she posts. Let's see if she can come and work with us as a designer. Let's see if she can come and work with us as a dev. Do you get So having a personal brand is great for these reasons. So how do you now build a personal brand? This is where we get to the nitty gritty of it. So the first thing I'll say is that you have to reflect and plan. You can't just wake up. I mean, people do, people stumble into personal brands, but then if you have decided that you want to make a conscious effort, I'd advise that you just sit down and you think, okay, so what do I want to do? What do I want to project online, right? So again, like I said, the first step is to identify your passions, values, and skills. What are you passionate about at this moment? Me, I'm passionate about young people. And so when I created my newsletter, it was a very natural thing for me to do because I knew that I cared so much about young people and wanting to see them succeed. You get So identify the things that you're passionate about. Identify your values, right? Are you going to be loud like Bob Risky? Are you going to be demure like Genevieve Naji? Do you understand? So you have to identify the things that are valuable to you, the way you'd like to project yourself online, and your skills. I mean, we're all, most of us are tech talent here, right? So you know that, oh, maybe you're learning project management, you're learning this, like, what are you trying to share? What are you trying to craft stories about online? So you need to identify those things. And then think about your education, your experiences, your exposure, your expertise, and your interests. I call this the Salem King framework because he um, talked about it in his book, Community. And these are the things that make a personal brand. Where did you school, right? What's your education? What did you study? What did you learn? What courses have you taken? What experiences have you had that are going to um, influence the way you project yourself online? Are you a first daughter? I'm a first daughter. And I feel like it impacts the way I project myself online. So do you get, what are you exposed to? Did you grow up abroad? Did you grow up in, um, what's it called? Um, like, where did you grow up? Do you get what have you seen? Where did you go to school? Like, for instance, Ama the Amazing, he's a content marketer. Um, and he grew up, he's from my hometown, um, Ikotepene, and he makes cooking videos. And he always infuses his language because that was what he's exposed to. Do you get? So those little, little things, in as much as there are so many other people who make cooking content, the fact that he, he's adding um, Anang to it, makes it sweet, makes it different, differentiates him from other food creators on the internet. What's your expertise? What are you so good at, right? And then this, the thing about expertise is that at different levels, you have different levels of expertise. You can be a beginner, but still be great at something, right? Or still be working towards something. So identify the things that you are good at, the things that you have learned, the things that you've trained yourself to do. And then your interests, what do you like? I like avocado, right? So then King doesn't like avocado. You made a video about it the other day. Do you get? Um, I like going out at night to party. Some people don't like doing that. Some people like sitting down and reading a book. Do you get? So what are the things that you're interested in that you can infuse in the way you project yourself online? That's very, very important. Then have a why that resonates with you. Have a why. Why are you doing this? What is the end goal for you, right? People have different whys and they don't have to be the most Mother Teresa-like kind of why. It could be, oh, I want to earn more money from this. That's fine. That's valid. That's perfect. Do you understand? It could be, oh, I want to touch lives. Oh, I want to help other people who are struggling with this thing. Oh, I want to get a technician visa. People have so many reasons why they have a personal brand. Do you understand? Just ensure that it's something that really speaks to you and will drive you when you're making content. I personally feel like the best whys are the ones that are not centered to yourself, right? They're the ones that sort of impact on other people because people can always tell. They can always tell when you're being genuine in your interactions with them. They can always tell when you genuinely care about the things that you're projecting online. So just identify a why and ensure that it resonates with you. And then the next step is to show up. So once you have planned, you show up. I feel like a lot of people just get stuck on this planning phase, right? They'd say, oh, I want to do this and this and this and this and this. And then they never show up, right? But you have to show up. Showing up is the bulk of the work and it's the hardest part of the work. It's very easy to say, oh, I want to do this, 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 this. But then when it comes to showing up, it can be so hard. So the way to do it is to build an online presence with content creation, right? So 
you pick a platform you say oh maybe um tiktok some people like tiktok because it's very it feels very calm and relaxed right or you could say linkedin because you're trying to reach a specific audience or you're trying to get a job just pick a platform and then create content content can be so many different things content can be video content it can be car resource it can be you just teaching people different ways it can do you understand content can be so many different it can be threads on twitter it can be polls it can be lives it can be spaces it can be anything just build it consistently 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 and then use storytelling as it so this storytelling is what you're infusing in the content that you're creating because every piece of content that you post tells a story even if there are no words even if it's just a picture if it's a picture of me at the beach it tells a story it tells a story that i went to the beach do you understand so using storytelling as a tool is going to help you elevate your content and then be consistent consistency is everything consistency with you showing up online is everything because it's what people are going to remember when they are thinking oh who do i hire oh i know this babe she always posts she's always doing this she's always doing that right and then they give it to you i use myself as an example this year i've been in my teaching bag i've been teaching a lot of classes consistently right and i keep getting these opportunities because people can say oh that's true i saw treasure she taught here so that means she's going to teach here too do you understand so consistency is going to give you the results that you want when building your personal brand. So to the next slide. So I'm just going to use these as examples of like personal brands that I feel like you guys should use as examples, right? Um, this is Victor Fatomi. Victor Fatomi is a designer and he is a founder. He's building Full Gap. And he's also the co-founder of Fort Canvas, another design agency, right? So this is his page. I think his personal brand is more developed on Twitter, but I was using Instagram just as an example. But just to show you, like, if you're building a personal brand, those are the kind of things that you would want to put. Oh, what are you building? Or what are you about? Where are you working, right? Um, very, very important. This is Chloe. Chloe is, like, my favorite, my favorite um, tech um, creator. She is... She used to be a product manager, but now she's exploring graphic design. And she shows it here. Um, work, money, life, product and design, right? She shows what she's on about here. And then this is PC to me, my mentor. Um, PC is a speaker. She's a teacher. She's a marketing executive. And she shows what she's, she's doing on her personal, like on like her personal, but she shows it on her page. So when you come, you already see, oh, PC is a speaker. She's a teacher. She's a marketing executive. You already know what to expect just by looking at her page. So when you're crafting your personal brand, this is what you should be thinking about. What do I want people to think about when I see, when they come to my page? Do you understand? Um, yeah, so that's very, very, very important. Um, let's go to the next slide. So yeah, let's talk about storytelling for a bit. Um, <clears throat> your life is one big story, right? Everything that you're doing makes a story. Everything you've done up to this point can be used as a story. Millions and millions of content resides inside of you. All you have to do is recognize and take advantage of it. Don't limit your narrative. You have the experiences, the expertise, interests and skills that you can glean from. Your personal brand will evolve as you grow. So on this point, I want to say that um, you don't have to have it all figured out. It can be very overwhelming when you're starting anything, right? And you're going to grow, you're going to evolve, you're going to find new interests. So trying to think about the why right now, right, can give you analysis paralysis and then you just get stuck and you don't do anything. But no, allow yourself, just start one by one, step by step. Oh, I learned this today. Oh, I designed this today. Oh, I built this today. Oh, see my GitHub, whatever, whatever, you get. So your personal brand will evolve as you grow. I like using Alma Simobi as an example because when I came on the internet, like around 2020, she used to make content for creators. So she was, all the things I'm saying, she used to say it, do you understand? And then she decided, oh, I love traveling and I have the means to travel. And so she, decided to evolve her brand to cater towards traveling content right now. So you too, as someone who is starting out, can evolve. You don't have to have it all figured out right now. So yeah, like I said, you don't have to be an expert to tell your story. On this, I want to say that people always think that they have to know too much before they can start. And that's not the truth. You don't have to know too much. You can just brand yourself as someone who is learning with others. Hi, guys. Instead of saying, these are the five ways to do this, this, this. You can say, today I learned this. Do you understand? Today I, I practiced this. It didn't work out, but I'm going to try this. People like that. People like when people are authentic about the stories that they tell. Do you understand? So if you're thinking, oh, I need to know so much about graphic design or so much about um, UI, UX, or so much about marketing before I start, it's not true. You can just share what you know. You can just share what you're learning. You can take people on a journey, right? Together as you're growing. And that's beautiful. It's so beautiful. Like I said, stories can exist in so many different formats. And then something that seems normal to you may be interesting to someone else. 
Um, on this note, there's this video I came across like a few years ago on how to cook perfect hard-boiled eggs. I thought it was hilarious because it had about 5 million views. And to me, I just felt like boiling egg is the easiest thing in the world. Just put it inside the pot and put water and leave it for like 10 minutes. In fact, if you think that 10 minutes is not enough, you can leave it for 15 and it will be boiled. But yet, 5 million people watch that video on how to cook perfect hard-boiled eggs. So don't ever think that what you're learning or what you want to share, something everybody knows. Sometimes it's not even just about the way you're sharing it. Sorry, sometimes it's not even about what you're sharing, it's about the way you're sharing it. People want to see your humor. They want to see your personality. They want to be reminded sometimes. Sometimes content just reminds you, oh, that's true. I want to do this. Oh, that's true. Treasure is doing this, so I can do this too. Do you get? So it's very, very important that you um, take note of that. Um, on this side, I have this avocado video that Sailor made. See, it's a very simple um, video. It just talked about how people who like avocado, like me, need to rest. And on Instagram, it had like over a thousand, a thousand comments. Do you understand? So what I'm trying to say is that content doesn't always have to be serious. It doesn't have to be this thing that you sit down and then you write and you craft and you plot. It's good for you to do that if that's what you want to do. But it can just be simple. It can just be, oh, I don't like avocado. People that like avocado should leave and everybody will talk. Do you understand? So, yeah. And then I'm using this um, this last slide. I have there's this babe that's renovating a house and I found her content very interesting because she just makes a number of number of videos where she just carries people along the entire process of her renovating the house. And you can do the same thing with your content. It can be just one long continuous story of you learning something, of you building a project, anything that you want it to be. It can be do you get so these are just examples of content that breaks the mode or breaks the norm of what you consider um content do you get this is content and as a personal brand you should be able to think outside the box you have to think about the fact that it doesn't have to be perfect it doesn't have to be you don't have to set up a ring light you get all right so I feel like I'm running out of time I'm just going to like okay, too. This is like that I'm super duper excited so I like to use this example again. Um, I love Dima Ome. She's a fashion and lifestyle blogger on YouTube. And I want to use this to highlight the importance of consistency. So Dima's first YouTube video was 11 years ago, and this is it. First ever YouTube makeup tutorial. I have a blog, and a lot of my followers and those who read my blog have asked me to put up a video showing how I create the looks that I post in the blog. So this is it. <laughs> if you like... So as you can tell, like she seems a little shy. She seems a little like quiet and shy. You get you can feel that she's not very comfortable in front of the camera. She even says, if you like, you can comment. Do you understand? So, but that was 11 years ago. And then now. Guys, this is going to be a travel vlog. Me giving you guys a travel vlog in December was a hope that I had that is coming to fulfillment i thank you lord okay guys i'm traveling this night it's about 4 p.m my flight is by 12 a.m she's literally talking to us like we are her friends right like we are facetiming each other she seems so confident she seems so happy she's just free right and that's because of consistency because she has done this thing for 11 years and now she's comfortable enough to do it and so that again reemphasizes my point that you don't have to have it all figured out. It doesn't have to be perfect. The more you do it, the more you're going to get better at it. And that's just life. That's just life. And then you can even see the growth from her room in Enugu to her fully furnished apartment. And that's because of the consistency, because of her building her personal brand. Time after time after time after time after time, after time again, she has been able to like get opportunities. She has been able to work with brands. She has been able to get deals that have elevated her quality of life. She get so. This is very, very important. So I'm really, really passionate about, it, about this. So yeah, so let's talk about how to start. This is the final slide before I take questions. Um, the first thing is to pick the right platform, somewhere you're comfortable or somewhere you stand to gain a lot. Um, I have friends who have told me, oh, I'm going to start posting on LinkedIn because I want to like um, get a job. And it's, it's perfectly valid. Or somewhere you're comfortable. Oh, TikTok, right? Or Twitter. Just pick somewhere that you feel resonates with you as a person. It doesn't have to be the platform that everybody is going for. If you don't want to show your voice, you can start a podcast. Do you understand? Or you can write a newsletter. I'm writing a newsletter. Do you get? You can do two if you want. You can do three. If you can do, just focus on one. Just pick the right platform that resonates with you as a person. And then curate your look. You can decide, for instance, if you are trying to brand as a business, um, not as an individual, right? You can 
pick the colors or themes that will resonate with you. This is important, especially for businesses, because it sets you apart from others, right? So for instance, when I think about red, I think about Coca-Cola. When I think about blue, I think about Pepsi. So it helps you stay top of mind with your audience. But if you're a personal brand, I honestly don't think it's necessary. Some people do it, but I don't find it necessary for personal brands. Um, but if you want to do it, then you should. Then post content around whatever you choose, your skills, your lifestyle, your interests, become consistent. You can choose to post three times a week and choose to post two times a week. I always tell people that consistency and frequency are not the same thing. If your consistency is twice every month, as long as you're posting twice every month consistently, that's great. Just ensure that people always remember you. Just ensure that people always know that, oh, Treasure is going to come. Like she said, she was going to post this week. Oh, we're waiting for a video from Treasure. Do you understand? So very, very, very important that you're consistent, whatever you choose. And then be valuable, provide value. Lean into what people ask you about. Usually when people ask me, oh, how do I create valuable content? I just always think about the fact that people will ask you questions. And when people ask you questions, it means that they're curious about something. And if anybody or if a number of people ask you the same question over and over and over again, then that means that there's an opportunity for them to learn from there. Do you understand? <clears throat> Last year, I was posting a lot of lifestyle content. When people always ask me, oh, Treasure, how do I get a job? Oh, Treasure, how do I um, join marketing? And then that made me realize that, oh, as much as people like my lifestyle content, they're also very curious about how I'm employed. I started creating content too about marketing, about productivity. So it's very, very important for you to lean into what people ask you. And that's how you find value. Um, and then measure, iterate, and evolve. If something is not working, you can choose to try something else. Um, Look at the numbers in your post. A lot of social media platforms now have analytics, dashboards. Figure out why a post did so well. What do people like about it? Can you replicate it in a way? If something is not working, change it. Do you understand? So yeah, that's all for today's class. I think there's something in the chat box. If anybody has any questions, um, I'll be happy to answer. Yeah. Thank you so much, Treasure. I will take the I'll take the question from YouTube. So Sebo has, what is the end goal of personal branding? Is it just for visibility? I mean, I did share like the like in that first slide. So I said that it gives you visibility. Yes, visibility is very important. If you're trying to find jobs, right? Um, people are using people that they know, people that they can see. So being visible will increase your chances of being able to get jobs. It gives you opportunities. It gives you money, right? Um, it gives you the ability to connect with people, to build community of people who are doing the same things that you're doing. So those are the reasons or the importance of building a personal brand. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, uh, someone is asking, how do I break into fintech space as a content marketer? How do you break into the fintech space as a content marketer? Yes. I think you should start posting content about content marketing for fintech. That's a very good way to start. And then while doing that, you can reach out to fintech companies that you like to work for and maybe propose ideas. Maybe if it is that you want to like write on their blog, because I mean, that's what content marketing generally entails, being able to create content for them. You can propose um, to um, to what's the word, guest post on their blogs. Like if they have companies, you can say, oh, I would like to write about this for the company's blog. And then you now propel that out, right? Visibility, that way more people are like, oh, this is what this person does. This person can do the same thing for me. But like, if you want to break into any, any space, tailoring the way you project yourself online towards that space usually really works. Oh, brilliant. Thank you so much. Okay, I'm going to take this last question. Please help us with some tools you use to create content. I'm a content creator, but I'm not exposed to some tools for video that can make my content better and, and to reach more audience. Okay, so um, the tools that I use personally for content, I use Canva a lot. I love Canva. I think it's very versatile and it just keeps getting better and better. You can do so much with Canva. So I think everybody should know how to use Canva. It's a lifesaver. Um, I use CapCut. Um, CapCut has been branded as the TikTok video editor, but it has a lot, a lot, a lot of things that you can use. You don't have to use anything fancy. CapCut works, InShot works. I think most times the problem is scale, right? So you can watch video, go online and just watch videos, how to use CapCut to do this, this, this. How can I do this, this, this? And you'll be able to maximize the tools already available to you. So CapCut, Canva are the tools that I majorly use for content. 
Okay, thank you so much, Treasure. Somebody said something. He said, Treasure, draw some treasure for us. So as a wrap of this session, I just wanted to share, like, what is, like, one last word that you'd like to share with you again. So draw some treasure. Uh, I think intensity is very important. I think intensity is really, really important. As much as you, like, you have to take every day, right, with weight, carry every day with weight, right, because that's how your life is going to go. So I feel like you should be more intense with the things that you care about. Intensity is very important. Thank you. Thank you so much. That was absolutely amazing. And I want you guys in the chat to give a round of a round of applause to Treasure. Thank you so much. And like I said earlier, also give a shout out, share your takeout from Treasure session, share on social media, any social media platform of your choice. Like maybe this will be the first time of for, or for you to put yourself out there like this is the opportunity tag us tag treasure and like i said imagine if treasure you share your content it's treasure. so um thank you so much treasure once again happy to do this with you um thank you so much so as we move swiftly to the next session um we'll be having um kelvin kelvin is the ceo and um co-founder at bumper I'm going to be reading his bio and I want you to like pay attention as I do so. So Kelvin Umechuku is the CEO and co-founder of Bompa, a platform that empowers African small business owners to start, manage and grow their businesses through mobile devices. Bompa is a venture back business management to revolutionizing digital commerce in Africa, which is backed by Google, Digitent Partners, the largest black-led venture firm in the world. And other partners raising a total of four point four million two hundred fifty thousand dollars in funding. Bumper has over seventy thousand merchants using its business management tool and facilitating over thirty thousand monthly orders through its hub. Before Bumper, Kelvin was the incubation program manager and portfolio manager at Corporation Hall where it designed and implemented multiple programs for early stage startups across Africa. He was also the program manager and head of business development at TechQuest STEM Academy. So that's the amazing bio of Kelvin. Kelvin will be working us through um, digital skills for business. So if you're looking to start and grow your business in this digital age, Kelvin will be sharing some tips that could help you do just that. Hi, Kelvin. Hi. Yeah, so um thank you for joining. How are you today? I'm good. I'm good. Oh nice. Uh so you have the floor. Hmm. Um so how is everyone doing? Um I, I don't think that um I don't think that it's gonna be possible to <laughs> I can't see people's comments. Right. Uh no, you can't on Zoom. Um, uh -huh. you can see them. Yeah, they are on YouTube. We're like on YouTube. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. So I am just going to be um sharing a bit. Um, the reason why I wanted to do this is just because I I realized that um there are a lot of there are a lot of people that are um in in a space where they're trying to figure out a few things. And I, you know, and for me, it's like thinking through um, all the things that, you know, I have done in the past. And, you know, if I was going to do it again, you know, like what are the things that I'll probably be thinking about? And so today I'm just going to be sharing a few things around um, for those people that, you know, would like to start up a, a company. You know, um, I, I assume that many, many people that are listening to me now are students. Um, or, you know, um, or I just, I just like, um, maybe after school, I'm trying to figure out a few things, you know, in their own journey, either they're, they're already, either you're already in, in this, in the workforce and you're trying to figure out what, what's next for you or you're, um, or you're just trying to figure it out from the beginning. So, um, I think this, um, I'll, I'll try to make this as helpful as, as possible, touching through some of my experience, but it will not be very long. So, um, <laughs> because I have an, um, something else just immediately after this. Um, so I'm going to give a, a 
some time for for Q and A. Um, so yeah, um, in the topic that was shared with me was around digital skills, um, digital skills for um for starting up a business. Um, and when I think about skills in general, um, how I think about it is that skills is literally all about problem solving. You know, um, no matter the skill that you have, no matter um, you know, what kind of skill that you want to develop, it's all about thinking through um, what are the problems that you would like to solve. Um, and, you know, the, the, is the, the easiest question I would ask, you know, anyone here is just like, you know, what actually are the problems that you would like to solve? Um, and when thinking through some of the problems that you would like to solve, you know, some of them can, it has to do with, you know, your edge, for instance, um, something that you're passionate about, you know, or the knowledge that you have gathered in the past. Um, for instance, when we were, when when we were thinking about bumper, um, starting our bumper in in 20, 2020, it was not the first time we were thinking or trying to, to build it. Um, and the reason why this came up to us was because a long time ago in, wow, I'm not sure, but my junior secondary school, um, I used, my mom used to work at Computer Village and I just used to go to Computer Village every Saturday um, because she 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 used to be a manager at a shop in Computer Village. Um, and so uh, just going through that entire um, experience of every every single Saturday, going there, seeing how some of this business, how she, she used to run the business or how, you know, other people were running the business, making money while, while doing all of those things, buying and selling phones, um, buying accessories and selling it to my classmates, all of those things, you know, even if at that time, it's not like I, I knew that I was going to start Bumper, but then um, years down the line in 2018, when myself and my co-founder started working together, we realized that there's there's a gap there. And this was because of the experience that we had, you know, for him to his mom, you know, we're both business owners. And so most times, you know, when we see some of these experiences, you know, you know, I could have decided that you know this was not important to me why would i be going to do sales salesperson for my you know in computer village every saturday when my 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 classmates were were playing football or doing anything like but then look at how you know some of these things connect later and so no matter what you're doing right now or something that you have done in the past sometimes um what's the problem that you're going to be solving for is going to come from those experiences and it would be very important to continue to reflect and think through some of those things. Yes, because you know nobody will do that connection for you. Um, Steve Jobs says something. He says you can only connect the dots looking backwards, and then you have to hope that you know at some point in the future those dots will connect. You know, and he said this. You know, when he was speaking um, about the fact that he learned how to. He took one random class, which is you know, about calligraphy, you know, um, writing very nice fonts, you know, and he's now being, you know, he was he was then um, praised as, you know, the person that basically brought in, you know, nice designs, you know, multiple fonts to the computer, to personal computing, because this was not something that, you know, was even thought about back then, right? So he was able to connect that, you know, build, him building Apple with just that that class that he took after he dropped out of um Stanford Business School. And I think you can um you can just search um 2005 Stanford commencement speech um by by Steve Jobs, you know, and you'll hear you'll hear more about what I just shared. Um but so a lot about it is gonna be about you know what problems can you solve. So when you're thinking through the skills that you even want to develop. You're all, you should have you should be thinking about what problems do you want to be solving for for people right so um you know some people would think through um i want to you know i want to become technical or you know i don't want to become non technical like i i used to be technical but now I'm not necessarily i will not consider myself technical um anymore because i have a co-founder who is technical um you know, that's how we basically describe, you know, um, you know, the skills, yes. Um, but then 
when I think about non-technical skills, and let me focus this on non-technical skills for a bit, is there are three large, large, um, you know, um, subset of the non-technical skills that I think like, no matter what you want to do, like it's just about thinking through these three boxes. Um, and it will be project management, it would be sales, and it will be communication, right? And I think like every, every non-technical skill, you know, especially if you want to build a business is, is dependent on these three, these three things. And no matter what you're doing now, you know, um, even if you're not doing anything that has to do with this name, um, so I don't necessarily think too much about the title, but then try to figure out ways that you are to ensure that you are developing these skills, either through the current thing that you're doing, or if you can just be learning on the side, right? So project management, sales, and communication. So how would, would you get better at project management, for instance? Um, it can just be taking on a, a small project on the side and trying to see that you can manage it end to end. Um, but also trying to do that in the right way. So if you have to take a free course at Udemy, you know, or go to Udacity and pay ten dollars, you know, for a course, you know, you should you should definitely do that. There are so many, um, there are so many resources out there, even you know, on YouTube, LinkedIn you know, that can help you with these things that I'm talking about. So project management, um, you know, if, even if you want to do product at some point, even if you want to run your own company, um, the basic skills, if you want to even do operations, the basic skills you get from project management is going to be very important. Even if you're doing program management, I, um, I think, you know, when they were reading my bio, you'd hear that, you know, I was incubation program manager, I was program manager at TechQuest, um, and the basis of pro program management is actually um, um, project management. Um, and then, you know, wh when I became, you know, a um, co-founder and CEO of a company, I realized that almost all the skills that I, that I was, you know, I was using as a project manager, program manager, manager you know, were transferred, you know, just to, so when you're thinking about organization, when you're thinking about trying to manage expectations, you know, you're thinking about managing different, you know, stakeholders in your, in your project. Um, so right now in stakeholder for, for me, you know, I have the investors. I, I was just putting together my investor update for Q1. You know, um, you have investors, you have your team, you have your customers, and all of these things are basics that you would learn, you know, in project management. Sales, obviously, like there's nothing that you cannot do with sales. People run away from sales. Um, but if you're going to be starting any business, I, please, <laughs> please run towards sales, right? For some reason, I, I, just, I just think like people um, just conclude in their mind that sales is not for me, right? You know, and I think that, you know, it's just, there's just a bad rep around sales. But there's nothing that you are doing <laughs> that you don't need sales, even if you are starting a business or not. Even if you just want to be a professional and say, oh, business is not for me, or even though, see, everything around, you know, going even to for an interview, you are selling yourself. Um, um, Treasure, I think the last week I was just talking about um, content. It is all about sales. You're selling yourself, you're selling the content that you want to push out. Even if you become a content creator that is big, somebody's going to contact you. That's how you're going to make money because somebody's going to start to contact you and say, we want to sponsor you. You're going to sell their product. So sales is sort of like something that you cannot actually do without. You're going to have to sell to your team members, so potential people that you feel like they have some skills that you need to start your business. And you're going to say, leave that company you're working for and come and work with me. And we won't let us build something tangible. It is selling. You have to sell the things. You're going to speak to investors and say, hey, I know that you have money and there's probably 10,000 businesses that you can give that money to potentially. I want you to give it to me because there's this that I can build. There's this. You're selling all of it. You're going to go to customers. Same thing, selling. So when you think about sales, you know, um, you know, no matter how many people are reaching this, don't think that it is not for you. 
So any way that you can use in developing that skills and just making it better. Um, so I've shared a lot of things, even marketing. It's all about selling, you know, um, team building, fundraising, all of it is selling. And so you would want to understand the core, you know, around selling. Um, and then the last bit that I mentioned in terms of this, the, the three core skills um, is the communication bit. You know, um, thankfully I knew how to write um, and I knew how to, um, you know, speak, you know, and some people just feel like, oh, it's, it's not something that is not for me. But um, one thing that happened, you know, when I was younger, I watched much younger was that I found ways to put myself out there, right? If I did not, some people probably are natural speakers. You know, when I see someone like Vuzi, you know, some people are just like, they're just great. I, even for someone like me, I'm just like, whoa, you know? But then when you go back to their own journey and you would see that a lot of those things were just putting themselves in situations that ensured that they could be better at that skill. I realized that anybody that is successful at anything is just the person that have decided that that skill is important to them and they want to put in the work to make that skill better, right? So if you see someone that is good with content, it's someone that have decided that, you know what, I want to learn this and I'm going to continue to put out content. Not the person that is just taking the taking course or listening to someone speak or just saving all the nice content, but the person that is actually creating those content, that is the person that is putting in the hours and is going to obviously get better. You see people like MKH, MKBHD, you see when they started, there's no, you know, you don't need everything to be taught out, you know, before you start. And I think like, you know, Treasure already had, um, mentioned stuff like that. So I, I don't need to go deep into that. Um, but then the the point is in in secondary school, for instance, um, one of the things I did, I realized that when I for some reason I okay, I became the head boy and I realized that I could not stand in front of the 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 school during assembly, right? I would be shaking visibly. This, when I say visibly, it's it's like <laughs> and but instead of me to say that I don't think it was it was for me, I asked the principal then that I actually want to be taking the announcement. For some reason, I don't even know why I did that at the time, because you know, um I'm not even sure that I was thinking this way back then. But I just said I wanted to be taking the announcement. Right. Maybe it was just an ego thing. Me just wanted to, you know, be in the assembly. Um, and they gave me, you know, I would just go out up there and shake it, <laughs> read the read the read the announcement. Right. You know, at some point I became used to it. Right. And when I got to senior secondary school, it was now a lot easier. Like even me, they don't really tell me that I should take an announcement. I'm just up there. Right. And I'm like, and I'm even laughing with people like, and there's 500 students just standing there. And it became easier. And that's just because I continue to put myself in that situation. Right. Um, and the same thing happened even in uni. Um, and I just became an MC. I don't even know <laughs> the breadth of my skills, but I just did this thing where I was, you know, I was down being called for free. I would go to where if you have your if the department have their end of this thing, I'll just go there and tell them I want to just be holding the mic. And that's basically and that basically and that helped me um through that entire journey of becoming a better communicator. And I also started writing. So if you go to my my medium, you see some old posts. I have not been writing of recent um because of work, but then um if you go back to my my medium, you will see that. You know, there's just right. I don't even care if it's good or bad or I just write, share it as fast as I can. And then those things, you develop those skills. So if you're going to do content, if you're going to do, you know, if you're going to be selling, if you're going to have to be communicating to, you know, people, press, um, this one, that one. You know, I think that that's his skill. You know, some people will, will be at work and they cannot communicate even anything. You know, somebody will say, um, they have something in mind, 
but they are not even able to translate it to an idea that it that is usable to any or, any other person. And no matter how skillful you are, it is very hard for that kind of person to lead, right? It's just going to be very hard, no matter how skilled, even if you're the best person there, it will just be very difficult for someone to put you in a leadership position because you are unable to communicate. So these three skills that I have mentioned now, right? I want you to just have that in the back of your mind, no matter what you want to do, no matter where you're going to have those three things in the back of my mind and just tell yourself that, you know what, I want to continue to be better, you know, a little bit. I'm not saying just go on right now and just, you know, take one six months course here, take one. No, it's not like that. Just ensure that you're getting better at those three things, you know, regardless of the role, right? But then when you're thinking about solving problems or starting a business, you know, if you're thinking about um, starting a business like, say, Bumper, um, it will not just be about the skills, you know, it goes back to what I said about, you know, finding a um, problem solving. Um, but if, if skills is about problem solving, then starting a business is more about finding the right problem to solve, right? Um, and this takes you a little bit, it, it, it takes you a little bit away from conventional thinking, right? And why I say this is that, if I don't know how many of you, okay, I cannot see anybody. <laughs> but you know, if you think about you know when you started school, for instance, um, you no, know, when you were in school, you know, mathematics, early days of algebra, you know, and somebody's and your teacher will always just give you one equation and say find x, right? Um, one thing that you would notice is that every single time the problems were given to us, right? And then we would have to solve it. So we were taught to be problem solvers, but not necessarily people that could find our own problems. I hope, I hope, I hope somebody got what I just said. We were taught, or we have been taught, or we have been conditioned to be able to solve problems. But I think a bigger question is, you know, if you are not even given a problem, would you know how to find a problem? Right. Um, and and that's why I say, like, you know, for finding a problem, for instance, it is there's a lot of introspection that you would need to do. Right. You would need to think through some a lot of things around, you know, your past, you know, your skills, the demo, um, your environment. You know, you have to start thinking about, you know, what is being lacked, you know, and what is available. So, for instance, when you know, I already mentioned the fact that, you know, we started still thinking about Bumper a long time ago, but um, when we actually started building it as a company was during the pandemic, right? So all of those things are already existed in our background. Um, but then think about it when, you know, there was now a pandemic and businesses could not go online. Now we have to realize that, um, oh, the thing that you have built, basically all the skills that we have developed in the past few you know, years, all the knowledge that we have gathered from you know, running businesses or you know, small businesses, all of the, the, the assets, because at this time, when myself and my co-founder were gonna start this, we had been building websites for, for people we're hosting websites. We, we're working in a company called Post Cabal. So we're hosting websites for people. And so business owners will come in and we're building the websites. It was still not a product. But at that time, when we it just connected, you know, and it needs you to not necessarily think about existing problems and solving it, but then how do you even find that a problem exists and that you can you can actually solve that problem based on what you know, um, who you know what you can do, um, your, what you're passionate about, you can actually solve a particular problem. And so that part of finding a problem is something that I'm, I'm going to, you know, end with, you know, and I, and I want everyone, you know, you know, when you think about it today, like you don't have to build anything with the next problem you're thinking about, but I want you to do this as an exercise. And probably always just do this, you know. I want you to just condition your mind to start finding problems, right? And don't just 
you know, it's very easy in, in Nigeria, they'll say something that, you know, we saw once that, that recently that, you know, we are one of the happiest countries in the world. And, and a lot of it is due to the fact that we just, like, a lot of inconveniences are just like, eh, we're okay. You know, we would, we would just find a way to just be okay with it. But I'm telling you now that I don't want you to be okay. When you notice an inconvenience, either being said by someone or even by yourself, I want you to just note it down, right? And then what you will do is to think through how possible ways that that problem could be solved, right? It does not mean you're solving it or you don't mean you're going, you're going ahead to do it. But what one thing is happening is that you're conditioning your mind now, yes, to actually find problems. So when someone speaks, when something happens to you, when you see something out there, you're already, you already are able to identify that that is a problem, right? And then you can now be thinking about solution or even just tell people about, or, you know, find a team to solve it or just ignore it, you know, does not, you don't have to solve everything. Like, because when you start detailing what exactly is needed for a particular problem to be solved, you know, you start seeing is, are you the person that could solve, the best person to solve it? Like, um, you know, do you have the resources? Are you able to get the resources? You know, those are the things that you're detailing. You know, what's the best way to solve that problem? What skills will be needed? Um, and then when you find one that, you know, just makes so much sense to you, obviously the one that makes sense to me will not be the one that makes most sense to you. If you were, if a lot of us saw pandemic, you know, not everybody were, were able to connect that they wanted to do what we did. If you would did, but not everyone, and that's just because not everybody have the same background. Like nobody, not everybody have the same skills, you know. So now we are developing better skills to even solve the problem better. But then it started with that connection. So if you have just trained your mind to be able to see these problems, I think that like you would um you would just have an edge, you know, over because most people generally most people would be waiting to be told the problem, and then they will be like, you know what, let me solve this problem. But if you're one of the few that would be able to identify the problem, then you already have an edge, right? And then when you're thinking about the skills that you want to develop, you know, I've already mentioned, you know, the three parts, you know, the project management, sales, and communication that I believe that all of us here should be, should be, you know, getting better at. So yeah, um, I'd get questions from me before I jump off. I hope that this was a little bit helpful. Um, yeah, I did about that. One. Yeah, thank you so much, Kelvin. Yeah, thank you. Uh, there's a question from Michael. He says, uh, about investors, what can be considered when searching and pitching investors? What can be what? Considered when searching and pitching investors. Anybody that is picking investors. I think he... he What? So did you say something? No, no, no. Please go ahead. Yeah. yeah anybody that's, uh, if I just hear someone saying they are picking investors, obviously, obviously, this person, you're probably, you're most likely doing well. Um, <laughs> and you have more money than you need. <laughs> because in the early stages, like most times, you, you're not even, you just, you just want to ensure that you do not die. And, you know, it's, it can sound, you know, that's why a lot of people make mistakes even around that. Um, because you know they can just you know pick any investor, but I think like when investors want to come into to invest in your business, you know they they do something called due diligence, right? And I believe that you know, the most important thing is also doing a due diligence, you know, um, to investors too that would like to come in, um, to invest in your business. Um, one way we just do it, the easiest way we we do it, um, like me personally, I just reach out to. Um, I go to their website and I and I find founders that are already they've already invested in, and most times you know I just reach out via via LinkedIn or if I know the person on social media I'll just reach out and say hey um um these guys are this thing you know um what do you think about this your guys have they been supportive um have you had issues with them you know or Google stuff about them you know um Google. Um, or just write it on tweet, search for them on Twitter, see what people are saying about them, and you know, just do your own DD. 
you know, to ensure that you don't have any um, issues. I, I think those are like just something to consider. It's just a, a DD. Um, and if it does not sound good, or if it does not sound great, obviously, you know, um, you should be you should be confident enough to walk away as long as you, you can do the picking. But if you want to die, well, <laughs> you might not have much of an option. <laughs> 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 Absolutely amazing. Thank you so much. Okay, one more question. Uh, Sparky has, what are the common steps to finding problems for those interested in starting a business or building solutions? I'm a developer. Thank you. Also, do you mentor me? Do you mentor people? Please. Um, so what are the what are the steps to you know um finding problems? I, I think I've I've listed a few of them. I think Many of the things that will be shared here, you know, that Treasure spoke about or that I've talked about, it is not in, is less in the learning, but in the doing, right? Um, and that's why I said, you know, it's, there's no, it's not a particular, um, you know, one, two, three things. I just feel like if you condition your mind and the way to do that is just actually calming down and reflecting. You know, we, we spend so much time running and going for the next thing that sometimes we forget to reflect and think about our day. You know, what are the, you know, the difficult times in the day? What are, so it's easy for us to say we are tired. Oh, I'm stressed. Ah, today. But nobody's asking, okay, what exactly stressed me today? What exactly is the difficult part of my day? What made my day actually terrible for me, right? And I think like that's just going that step further is taking that action that would help you develop that skill, right? Because if you think about it for a minute, if you just notice it, everybody is just, it's, it's easy to say, I was stressed. Oh, traffic was this, this one. Like why is the other question that you would want to ask, right? And if you, if you think about it and then you say, hmm, um, why did this thing have a like why did this thing happen this way? And what would what would be the different thing? Like if you know, if for instance I this happens or this happens, will my experience and my overall experience change? Will I have a better experience? You know, those are stuff to think about. Um, so for instance, yeah. um the, the person that asked the question is a developer. So um, you probably have worked with multiple APIs. There might be just one, one that you work with and that it was just terrible. It was just terrible, right? And, you know, the experience of working on it, you know, there, are, there are ways to handle this. So one would be, how can I even contribute to, to their, you know, to the development of their own SDKs? Um, and if I can write something better, I'm going to give it to them. And then in a way, that's a way for you to even get a job easily. Somebody reached out to me via email one day and, and said, and said, oh, I'm a data analyst guy. I do this. Like, why one long email like this? And for some reason, normally I don't read those emails, right? For some reason that day, I just, I just, I don't even know what, I just read the email. And I was like, okay, this guy, you know, he's able to set himself in a, like in terms of with just words. And I sent to him, I said, can you show and not just tell me? And he and he's like, you know, what do you mean? And I'm like, and I just stopped continuing the email. And it sounds very weird, but then one easy thing to do, yes, if you want to reach out like that, is to do the work in advance, right? Like if somebody comes to me now, like, and don't get me wrong, that is not, I'm not telling you something that I have not done. Even um, I worked with ingressive, ingressive. You know, when it was not yet for good, this was 2017. Um, and if you ask, if you go back and ask Dr. Maya or Sean, you know, how I reached out and how I got this job was I I created a two-page document or three-page document. I, I, I'm sure I still have that document. Um, so I used to be a community manager. Um, probably I'm still a community manager, but I would I I do, documented the things that I wanted to do to help aggressive, you know, um, push, you know, become a bigger community. I detailed it and I detailed even what I need in, in terms of the amount. I said, I just needed internet and power. And this was about 38,000 naira at the time. This was 2017, right? And I, I just finished school then. So I just sent it, I, I, I reached out to 
Maya, you know, she sent me to Sean. I sent it to Sean. We had, he just said, oh, let's have a conversation. And that was how I got the job, right? And so it's just that thing that most people want to just be able to say and they don't want to do anything, right? Um, even when I when I got to gig with um, Inyi, I reached out to Inyi in 20, I don't remember when, and I, and I reached out to him on LinkedIn, called him, him um, message. And I said what I want, this is how. So we need to be able to take that time to be able to do that, do some work, you know. And some people would say, oh, I'm just doing free work. Obviously, not all of them will pan out. But then you're not also just doing free work. You're developing yourself, you know, because when you can think through some of these problems, you know, are you able, all of these things still is still tied to everything I have said. Are you able to find a problem in a current, in an existing system? And then now go on to solve it, solve for it. Even if you're wrong, mm -hmm. you know, you have tried and hopefully, you know, some the person can reach out and say, oh, or we'll start about this or, you know, um, oh, 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 this will not work and here's why. But you're getting better, right? So I think like, you know, in terms of just, if if you were, if just doing something like that now, or, you know, based on the APIs, someone else actually I've seen, um, Tro Trojan, the co-founder of DPR, you know, he worked with a couple of APIs and he just realized that many of them, like managing it was just terrible. And he has built a, another company now that has to do with managing your API assets. And that is just someone being able to find problems based on their own experiences, right? Um, and I think that is something that, you know, you can develop just by doing, not I don't think that there's any other way to do it but by doing it, right? So please just try to develop those skills. Um, if I do mentor, I don't necessarily do anything like mentorship or anything. Like if you ask me a question, I can respond. Um, but I, I also do not necessarily believe in that kind of this journey. I feel like um, we should be doing it in terms of um, looking out for people that we can solve problems for. Right. So um, some people will say, okay, yes, I, I talk about the people that I, you know, like, eh, oh, oh, these people have been a big part of my journey. And the question will be, am I doing that for other people? But then, yes, I am. But then it's not in the typical mentorship, mentee relationship. It is in, in all of these people that I've mentioned, I was solving a problem for them at some point. You know, and you wanted to hire people from universities and I was just helping them. So find problems to solve for people. If find problems to solve for me. If you are taking something away from my, <laughs> I'm going to care about your own journey. Like, but then everybody just thinks in terms of just themselves and what you can, you think you can get from mm. people. But I think you should first be thinking about what value can I give? And you will just see that these people will take their time. So it's not just about me, it's for anybody. You want to go to Adash, you code Africa, you want to speak to Samson God, you want to speak to um, you know, Alma, and, and just find something that they're trying to do and help, right? You know, and just do it. Um, and then you would notice that they would also want to do something for you. I think like that's the best way to build those kind of relationships. Um, I think we are beautiful. Yes, thank you so much. So you shared a very interesting perspective to problem solving, doing okay. problem and mentorship. Okay. Really, really interesting. Okay. Thank you so much. So yeah, um, do you have any um final words to share with these people in like um two seconds as we move on to the next session? That's it two seconds, I mean ten seconds as we move <laughs> on to the next session. Yeah, there's, there's something I there's something I talk about a lot and I say um um, okay, I even have it on my wall here, which is, it is keep showing up, right? And I think like it is the most on the, the most important thing for everyone, you know, to think about is you want to continue to show up. You know, some people will call that consistency. Some people will call that, you know, um, you know, being, you know, doing it every day. But then it's more about just showing up, even when you do not feel like it. Right. So I would say, you know, no matter the skills that you're trying to develop without or you're trying to start a business, the most important thing is that every day you wake up and you be, you just you commit to something and you say, you know what, I'm just going to show up again and again and again. And I think like good things come to those 
um, that show up. <laughs> So yeah, um, thank you everyone. Um, it was good to have this conversation. Yeah, absolutely. See you at the top. Yeah, good things come to this. We show sure up. Yeah, thank you so much. So guys, like you said, give a round of applause to Tovi in the chat while you share your takeout from the session on social media. Be sure to tag him, tag him Russia for growth, tag the Nicolon, and so we can see and repost your content. So we are moving swiftly to the next session. Um, our guest is. Fauzia Damonde, so I'm going to be introducing her quickly. Um, so Fauzia is is a one part content creator, one part community builder, with a knack for creating content that not just that's not just valuable and fun, but also focused on building and engaging the community. She's a communications manager at Congresses for Good, a non profit to the mission to create and increase the earning power of African youth through tech tech training and resources for the growth of the African startup ecosystem. Fauzia has worked with several SMEs to help them gain clarity on the best ways to communicate with their customers, how best to reach them, and how to build their communities. She's an excellent communications manager and, and is doing profoundly well in Universal for Good. And today, she's going to be sharing strategies to reach your full potential through essential skills and learning. Hi, Fauzia. How are you doing? Hi. Hi, everybody. Hi. It's morning. Well, um, so good morning, everybody. Good afternoon, if it's where you are. Permit yeah, me nice to, to not stand you. on my camera. Nice, nice to have fine. you as well. I will share my screen. But yes, thank you so much. Um, Hello, everybody. Um, I don't know how, how to speak with you without reading the comments. So I definitely, definitely will be looking at the comments. Yay, someone is screaming. Any palsy. Hi, Bernard. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm just going to get started so that I can um um wrap this up as soon as possible. Um please give me a moment to share my screen. All right. Please, Dalakwa, could you confirm if you can now see my screen? Yes, yes, I can. All right, thank you. Um, so hello everybody. Just like Dalakwa said, I will be speaking on strategies to help you reach your full potential using um essential skills and learning. Um, I will be majorly focused on the learning bit. Um, because I know that a lot of the speakers who have been here today have talked on, uh, they've touched on, you know, some of the skills that you can use to reach your full potential. Um, so hello, my name is Fauzi. Um, I wanted us to do a little quick exercise so that I could, you know, hear from you and know if you too have learned anything today, just like I have. Um, I can name a bunch of things that I've learned, but I want to give you a chance to do so first in the comment section, just so that I know that you guys are with me or you've been with the rest of the session. Um, thank you. I know there's a little bit of lag, so I'm going to give it a few minutes um to get your responses. All right, awesome. Thank you. Someone wants to be reminded of my. Someone wants to be reminded of my topic. My topic is um, strategies for strategies to help you reach your full potential. Um, and then people are already sharing what they've learned. I've learned to show up daily. Problem solving is important. Be consistent. Um, keep showing up. Always show up. Um. 
importance of personal branding, building public. This is amazing. I'm so glad that you guys are learning a lot. And I hope that I too can share a couple of things that you take away from this. Um, so why of scale, right? I know that a bunch of you here would have the basic knowledge of what it means to upskill, to up your skills, right? So I want to first touch on why it's even important in the first place so that, um, I mean, if you know why it's important, you'll be interested in the rest of the things that I have to say, right? So first thing, I want you to tell me in the comment section, what give me examples of jobs that AI can take. What are some jobs that, you know, you think that in a couple of years, they won't exist anymore because AI will take them over. Any ideas? In, they already introduced me as a community person. So I kind of, I kind of need to do this. I need to hear from you so that, you know, I'm better able to pass my um, message. Um, so tell me examples of jobs that you think that AI can take over in a couple of years, or maybe jobs that AI is currently taking over right now. Kasia, copywriter, content writing. Okay. Um, any other example? Writing, writing. All right. Sales, um, content writing. Oh, awesome. Um. So my message today, my first message, which I pretty much figured out the moment I wanted to start working on this, is that AI cannot replace you. AI cannot take your job. The person who uses AI is the one who can and most certainly would. What does this mean? It means that upskilling ensures that you're not left behind. It is that person who upskills, who learns to use the tools that are currently available. It is that person who's going to take your job from you if you remain competent, right? Um, um, I watched a movie a couple, a couple years back. Hidden Figures. Hidden Figures is a it's a black story basically, and um, one of the key learnings from that story is that um, you know, technology would always come. Something new would always come. Something able to replace the work that you do would always come. But that thing needs somebody to run run it right. In that story, there was a woman. Um. People, people wear mobile calculators, if that's the right thing to call them. I've watched the movie a long time ago, so I hope I'm saying it right. They were mobile calculators. That means that they were the calculators. You know, your role was calculator. So if they needed to solve something, they give it to you and you basically calculate it. So imagine that that was, that. imagine that that's your job. There's a calculator now. So why would that be my job, right? So it means that tools came up and some people lost their jobs, but some people didn't. This woman, for example, learned to use the tool. The tool is called an IBM. She's black. They didn't ask her. They didn't give her the opportunity to learn to use the tool. But she realized that the tool was coming and she realized that the tool was going to take her job and the jobs of her people. Um, so she started learning how to use that tool. She learned how to use the tool before the white people who even had access to the tool. And when they realized, when they thought that the tool was not working, she stepped in and made the tool work. And she was able to make demands. She was able to say, um, if you want me to continue to do this, all my women have to come with me. So she pulled up all the people behind her as well. Um, point is, if you learn, if you upskill, you're not in a position, you know, to be bounced when these new technologies come. Um, my second point, why upskill, right, is you can't pour from an empty cup. So Treasure, for example, spoke a lot about personal branding, right? Um. Kelvin talked about showing up. Um, um, Davy also mentioned stuff about showing up. Point is, what are you going to show if there's nothing to show? What exactly are you going to come out to show if there's nothing to show? So Treasure gave an example of how, you know, the basic things, um, as, you know, the basic things, how to boil egg. Somebody's sharing it on there. But at some point, you're going to share how to boil egg. You're going to share how to peel egg. You're going to share how to eat egg what's left unless you know how to digest egg and you're going to keep going so unless you're you know continuously filling your own tank there'll be nothing left for you to to pour out There's, there'll be nothing left for you for you to um for you to give back right my next point is competence leads to confidence right um 
it's hard to tell someone to be confident when they don't know what they're saying, right? I, I used to make a joke about how, you know, how people would say that um they're shy and they don't like to speak publicly. And so, you know, you're trying to go up the stage and your friend is saying that, don't worry, don't worry, they can't eat you. Go there, be confident. But deep in your mind, you know they can't eat you because you really have nothing to say. So I know that it's such a thing as knowing what to do and being shy, but there's also such a thing as confident and um, competence overriding the little shyness that you have. So maybe in the beginning, you're going to shake a little bit, but the fact that you know what you want to say, it's, it builds up, it builds your confidence, right? Um, uh, increases your earning potential. I know this is, this is what everybody wants to hear, right? Is this thing going to get me money? Of course it is. Um, all over the world today, there are people who work twice as hard as the people who earn 10 times than they do, right? But the unfortunate thing is that they're not working smart, right? You will go to um, corporate organizations, you see a woman laboring, or let's say a man before they come for me. So it could be a man or a woman, right? You see this person laboring nonstop on the computer, typing and typing and typing and spending all their days, you know, doing the same type of work over and over again. And there's just that one person who comes in two hours after resumption time, you know, sits in the office, has meetings and disappears. And this person ends way more than this woman. Why? Because this person has built their um, expertise. This person has upskilled. They're not just the person typing at the keyboard. They're now somebody who knows a little bit more. I'll give another more common example. Um, you know, the alien apps, um, this e-taxi services, Uber, Bolt, um, Rider, all of them. Um, there's something that Uber drivers have tried to do in the past. Oh, they still do it, but I, I mean, I think it has reduced significantly. When you get into the ride, they will ask you to do um, an offline trip because they want to make more money, blah, 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 blah. So I got into a conversation with one um, the last time and I'm like, I don't think it's fair to cheat Uber. And that's why I'm not going to be doing an offline trip. And then the man tried to convince me that he's the one doing all the work. He's the one who is, is the owner of the car. You know, he buys his fuel, fuel cost, X, Y, Z. Um, he, he sits in traffic. If the, if the car gets broken down, he fixes the car. He, da, 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 da. You know, a long list of all the things that he does. And, and then he went ahead to say, but the Uber guys are just sitting in their office and expecting to get money. And I'm like, how did you find me? Somebody starts in their office, works smart, figured out a way for you to find me. And then now that you found me, you're you're trying to cut them out. Point is, um, Uber is making so much more money than these people. Uber takes a percentage, which is, you know, maybe significantly less. They take a percentage from the driver. They take a percentage from each driver for each trip and they make more money. Why? Because they do the smart work, right? If you want to increase your earning power, um it's okay to start as a driver right i'm not saying that you know i'm not saying i mean driver i'm using it meta metaphorically it's okay to start where you are right now but if you have goals to increase your earning potential then you need to be thinking about ways to you know become the alien half um so it keeps your head in the game right if you stop learning new things and exploring, you'll be bored out of your mind. You'll be doing the same things over and over and over again, just like I've given an example. So if you want to stay in the game and have some fun while at this, you have to keep learning. You have to keep finding new ways, better ways, easier ways, faster ways. You have to continue. Um, no matter how good you think you are, if um, if you're not doing something better, somebody's going to come up. That's why nobody likes Gen Z's today. It's because they know stuff that they don't, that, you know, the older generations don't know. They they, they just feel like Gen Z's are all up in their faces. But that's how life is. It's going to continue like that. Um, uh, I remember um, I, I, I have a friend who I tell that when we grow older, she'll be the one tilting her glasses and saying, which one is this one again? Because she doesn't, she doesn't check what's going on. She doesn't, she doesn't keep her head in the game. She's, she's okay where she's at. I mean, it's okay now, but you know, in a couple of years, it may not be so. So if you know that you want to keep your head in the game, then you have to continue to learn, right? Um, so I know that um, there are a bunch of people here who may not be employed, and I've been speaking about, you know, when you're employed, what to do, um, how how upskilling helps you when you're employed. And I know that question is, wait, why, 
how how do I keep my head in the game if I haven't even gotten in the game already? So let's talk about how to use upskilling to get into the game, right? Or how upskilling gets you into the game. Um, the first one is that you find your kind. Um, if you're very passionate about upskilling, you find that you're able to hold your own conversations. So um, I don't know if anybody has ever noticed um, people who read, whether it is um, self-help books or whether it's just novels, they are better able to have conversations than people who do not. It's the same as how people who read are better able to write than people who do not because one, they're exposed to a lot of um, words. You know, you, you know, you're constantly hearing people speak. You're constantly reading what people have said in the past. So it's easier for you to put those words together. Those words are easier, right? It's, it's different from somebody who, I mean, you know it because maybe you did a BSD in this course, but that's, that's, the, that's the last you've heard of it. So yes, you have an idea, but it's, it's not going to flow as easily as somebody who is constantly doing it, right? Um, it's it's you're no longer just repeating what you're hearing everybody say. You are you're talking because you've read and you've expanded your mind. So if you upskill, you would have expanded your mind, you'll be able to own your own conversations, you stand out in the midst of people, and because of that, your kind will find you and you will find your kind because you're both standing out, right? Um, two, so it would increase your confidence. Um why does increasing your confidence matter when you're trying to find a job? I don't know if you've ever been in a situation where you see this job, you read through it and you're like, nope, this is not for me. And you just close it. You don't bother applying. No matter how, um, how you may see that, you know, you fit into a couple of checks, you check some boxes, but you don't check some boxes. Or you check all the boxes and you'd be like, this money they're trying to pay. It will mean that the work is more than I assume because well, this money is not for me, right? Um, but if you're upskilling, you just you the price will always change for you. Today you're asking for a hundred k. Tomorrow, no way, I'm asking for two hundred k because you're upskilling because you know in your heart that you're becoming better, right? Um, when you're confident, you're able to ace interviews. You're able to speak more confidently, right? I know that interviewing and CVs and all these things they're not exactly the best ways to find talent. Um, but now that we don't have a better way, now that this is the way that we're currently doing it. It's best to, you know, position yourself to be to be able to ace those things, to be able to overcome those things, right? Being confident, knowing your stuff allows you to be confident. And being confident allows you to communicate better with interviewers. Um, and I've heard somewhere that half of the time, the people interviewing you don't know the role more than you. They don't know it more than you. So the little knowledge that you have, the knowledge that you've been able to gather, it builds your confidence up to the point that when you're speaking, they don't feel like you don't know the stuff, right? Sometimes what you're saying, they don't even know whether it's correct or not. But the way that you're properly, properly um, putting your words together helps a lot. Um, it helps you apply for more senior roles. I already gave an example. Um, you know, you see a role, you think that it works for you. Another thing, if you finally get a job, I hope my employer is not hearing this, but I've heard multiple times that when you find a job is the best time to start trying to find a better job, right? Because um you know you are in a more comfortable position um and so you are able to properly bargain for what's best for you so you can start applying immediately your confidence is still there you're still upskilling you're not just complacent um and then to help you to better communicate your value i don't know if you've ever heard you know anybody talk to you about your superpower what's that thing that you can do what's that? why should i pick you out of everybody else when you're confident it allows you to do so right um enhanced expertise i think this has also already you know somehow somewhat been said in my in my in, you know in everything that i've been saying right so you have better expertise when you know what you're doing it's easier for um hiring managers for example to pick you out of it so for example i'm a hiring manager i have a hundred cvs in front of me i'm trying to break them down but i see that this, this one person that aside from the fact that she went to school to study computer science she also took this course. She also did this. She also did that. She also freelanced. She also volunteered. All of you are entry level. All of you came out of the university at the same time. Or all of you have two years experience in your career. But this one person, she's different because she proves that she's always willing to learn. She's always learning stuff. And companies, hire us, they like people who are always learning. They like people who can learn and unlearn. Because what that, what that says basically is that, you know, when we bring this person into our company, 
this person is able this person is able and willing to you know learn this learn the new stuff that we have available um competitive edge i i think i probably joined this two together um competitive edge there's a bunch of people you're competing with you're different because you know you've done you've done the work so now let's talk about how um wait let me see that people are actually still with me uh give me a second can you guys still hear me the lack of Okay, I don't know if anybody can hear me. Oh, yes. Okay, thank you. Um, so let's talk about how. Um, first, assess your skills. What's the question? How? How? Um, how do you learn? How do you? How do you upskill to make yourself better employable? Right. Um. So it's it's one thing to just learn stuff. It's one thing to take a course and that's it but that's not it so we want to understand how to learn specifically to help us become more employable right so assess your skills what what skills do you currently have right um the blue the blue marks i don't know if you can still see my screen but the blue marks are basically where you're currently at identify where you're currently at identify where you're going and then make a list identify the things that you need to do to help you get there for example, I am a um an example. I am a toothbrush. I want to be I'm a manual toothbrush. I want to become an electric toothbrush. So I'll list the things that I need. Oh, to become an electric toothbrush, I need a motor, I need batteries, I need XYZ, right? Um assess where you're currently at and then where you want to be, and then make a list of things that would help you reach there. Some of the things that you can do to do this is look for people who are currently in the places that you want to be. For example, um, I'm into marketing, I'm into brand and marketing. So I will search on LinkedIn for marketing managers or brands that I admire. For example, Bang and, Banks and Olufsen. I will search for the marketing manager. I will check his profile. I will see who he is. I'll see what he does. And then I'll understand that, okay, maybe to do this, I need to do this. And so I'll make that list and I'll, you know, I'll be better informed. Do identify trends. Um, we've talked about how, for example, AI seems like it's taking jobs. But if you are, you know, if you are somebody who is always reading and always identifying trends, always looking for trends, um, you're better positioned. So you've listed the things that you need um, to reach point B. And then now you've listed the trends that are currently in the industry that you're trying to go. So you put those two together. And then you set your learning goals. So what are my learning goals? I need to learn this, 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 this to become Mr. B. And then I also need to learn about these trends that are currently listed. I need to learn how to use ChatGPT. Um, I said that, excuse me, I said that somebody who uses AI will take your job, not AI, but somebody who uses AI smartly will take your job, right? I know that ChatGPT is everywhere. Um, everybody is using it, but if you're using it wrongly, you are maybe a little bit worse than the person who is not using it at all, right? You are not supposed to you know, garbage in, garbage out with so ChatGPT. You're supposed to use it to to reason. You're supposed to use it to understand what's going on. You're supposed to use it to get a deeper understanding of what you already know. Um, if you don't know what you want, um, ChatGPT cannot give you what you want, right? So if you are better, learn how to use ChatGPT. I know that there are a lot of um creators on social media. That talk about prompts that talk about you know properly feeding chat gpt so you may want to do all of those things right so learn the trends in your industry and then learn how to um how to use them to your advantage give me a second please all right um so my next point, my slides are not moving away. Right. Okay, so choose a learning path. Um, so you know what your learning goals are. You know the trends that you want to learn about. So choose a path. Um, for example, the woman I spoke about in Hidden Figures, she she went to the library. She picked picked up books. I mean, maybe that was what was available for her at the time. But all I'm just saying is that find something that works for you. Because there's a rave about online courses now, does not mean that that's the one for you. 
because people say that oh i can't take online course oh my god i can't i can't i need interaction it doesn't mean that you need interaction too so figure out what works best for you and make sure that you follow that path and it's okay to realize that oh this is not working let me let me find some other solution right um and then also understanding that your your learning path may not necessarily be based on what you like it may also be based on what's available to you it may also be based on um so i go to school every day the only way i can do this is to study online at home at night you may not like to study at home at night but that's what's available to you so if you are if you're focused on your goals if you're focused on reaching the goals that you've set you may have to use what's available to you so choose a learning path that works for you choose a learning path that you like or choose a learning path that would help you reach your goal faster um then stay updated i already talked about this one um Stay updated with the trends. They continue to read, continue to spend some time on social media. Make sure you are following the right people. Your social media is not supposed to be entirely um, filled with comedians, unless that's what you want to be, of course. Make sure that you have a good mix of everything. Make sure that if you're a data analyst, make sure that you, you have a good mix of, um, you're following data an an um, analysts, you're following data scientists, you're following people who, you know, constantly speak about their careers. You're following um content creators maybe because you know they're also in the data field but this is what they're doing you're following people who have the jobs that you want to have and apparently are posting about you're following communities um same as you know other career paths just always stay up to date and the easier way to stay up to date is to you know make it easier for yourself to see it right you cannot stay up to date if you don't have your notifications turned on on particular topics i think um google alert you can you can you know find specific keywords that you want to receive Google alerts for if you if the, if you know somebody publishes something about it you can do that um you can follow the right people just like I've said make it easy for yourself to stay up to date by you know putting those things in your in your peripheral vision um practice continuously um I think that basically explains itself. They, some people say practice makes perfect. Some people say practice makes improvement or something like that. I can't remember. But just continue practice. Um, build a professional network. We already spoke about this. If you know your stuff, it'll be easier for you to build a professional network. Kelvin also already pointed out that, um, you know, if you want to build a relationship with people, then you have to be able to offer them some value. It cannot just be give me, give me, give me, give me. It has to be, um, here's what I have to offer. And, you know, you don't, when you're trying to build a relationship or a network of people, you're not trying to, you're not trying to, it's not a trade by butter, fast, fast, now, now thing. It's a long-term thing. So build relationships now. Um, I, le I heard something, I think sometime last year, um, the person said that if you think that you're going to be the next big thing in two years, why do you think that your friend who is also, in your level is not going to be the next big thing why do you think that the person who is also a little bit below you is not going to be the next big thing if you don't think that they're going to be the next big thing then why should they think that you're going to be the next big thing point is if you connect with those people in your level now the same way you assume you're going to be the next big thing is the same way they to do and so when they become the next big thing whether you're the next big thing or not you've already created a network with them I feel like I've said next big thing a lot. Let me say that again to make it a little simpler. Connect with people in your level now. Connect with people below your level now because just as you're working hard to be better, they are too. And so when they become better, they're going to be more useful to you because you trying to reach people who are high above or oh, I need a mentor. I don't want to do peer-to-peer -peer learning because what does my peer really know? Oh, I want to be talking to, give me somebody popular. Uh... I want to be talking to Frank Donga. Uh, I want to be talking to, I don't know, Elon Musk, right? You want, you want, you're, you're trying to reach for the sky. You're trying to reach for people higher because you believe that they can give to you. But um, assume that, you know, your growth is also going to have, the growth that you're expecting for yourself is also going to happen to the rest of people that you're in the same level as right now. And then, you know, build a relationship with them now now that it's easier um show your work right so you're learning all these things nobody's going to know when i was in secondary school my principal used to say that 
um they chose the most beautiful girl in the world but the most beautiful most beautiful girl in the world is in the hygiene oh my god i thought i knew that thing but i think i've forgotten it point is if you're learning and learning and learning there's somebody who doesn't know half as much as you do and the person is all over social media the person is you know bragging maybe bragging is the wrong word but the person is showing their work right the person is showing up um so if you ever want to be in the faces of the right people show your work all of us speakers today have spoken about this so i guess that you already understand the gravity you already understand how important it is um stay persistent um i think this is my final slide um it's not going to be easy um i i mean people who have even grown so much higher than you know that part that point where you're thinking you want to be the person that is there they are tired they want to go up so it's always going to be like that it's always going to be hard it's always going to you know you have to continue to strive you have to be tenacious i know that it will get tiring um take breaks that's fine but always stay persistent um there's something about um so say for example i don't know if you've ever heard of being t-shaped what that means is that you're grounded in something, but you have wings, like letter, capital letter T. So you see the way the, there's a stroke that comes down into the ground. So you're grounded in something. Say, for example, I'm grounded in um, communications. Like, that's my core. I know communication. So even when you say that, okay, I don't know what else to learn about communications. Or for now, I, I think that I don't have access to learning communication stuff. Being persistent means that you will spread your wings to other things. So let me learn a little bit of community. Let me learn a little bit about design. Let me learn a little bit. That's being that's the the top of the letter T, you know, the wings. So be grounded, be T-shaped. Um, take every opportunity to, you have to learn and you'd stand out amongst everybody. Maybe you'll be a flower that comes out of work. So yeah, that's everything from me. Thank you. Amazing. Thank you so much. Pause it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That was really, you dropped a lot of gems. I mean, loved your um, storytelling, loved how you were able to relate it. Related to things, a lot of things, your proverbs, the proverbs, or had it, or, and everything in between. Really amazing. So now we'll be taking questions. Um, what, let, let, let us know if you have any questions for Pause. Um, okay, while we wait for people, okay, there's a question. Tara has, um, how do you think inferiority complex can be handled? Um, I'm trying to find your time for skilling for food. Okay, why trying to find your time for skilling for food? Dako, can you say the second part again? I'm not sure I heard. Okay, she asks, um, how do you think inferiority complex can be handled while trying to find your kind of skilling purpose? Okay. Um so I'll try and you know be as short and short as possible, right? They say that comparison is the thief of joy. Um I think that Stop focusing on what other people are currently doing. Again, the point that you currently are is the point that somebody else is hoping to be. And I know that you have goals, you know, the people that you are feeling inferior to, maybe, maybe you may be inferior, maybe you are not even inferior, but try and take the good parts of it. Try and pick out learnings from them. Try and understand that the way that you see what's in them they see what in you too. So recognize your own worth, right? Ignore the negative thoughts. And if you see that maybe the inferiority complex is happening somewhere on social media, find the root source and try to address the root source rather than, um, you know, ad avoiding this person in its entirety. I always say that in every bad situation, there's something you can stand to gain out of it. So try to pick out what that thing that you stand to gain is. Um. You can also keep a wing journal, right? Keep a book of the things that you succeeded in. Write it down. No matter how small it is, always write it down. These things will help you to build your own self-worth. You know, you continue to believe in your own self. Um, You might also, you know, you could also like find 
friends or peers that you want to you know you want to lean on for support you know that this is the issue that you're having um but i think i basically summed it up know your own worth right um and then find support in the people that can help you pick out the best things pick out the good part of whatever situation that you find yourself the person that you're fe- feeling inferior to there's a reason you're feeling inferior to them so learn from them learn that thing that they know that you want to know to let it drive you i hope i've answered that question yeah perfectly thank you so much thank you that's really good um if you have any questions please don't hesitate to ask while you wait for another question i'd like to ask you about this how do i start off as a communications person what are like basic why do you want my job (laughs) <laughs> no, I'll just ask. I know there's somebody else today that probably needs the answer. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um. So I'm I'm going to talk about how I started. So um. I mean, all our journeys are different, but how I started is um. I started out with content creation. I may have mentioned it in the middle of this conversation. I started out with content creation. So what I used to do was um create content on my social media page um i used what was available to me which was my social media page i shared what i knew using the social media um um platform that i was most conversant with i wasn't using twitter at the time i was using just instagram right and that was where i found people the first thing i did was i did a free um instagram um what's that thing called audit for businesses um a lot of businesses applied i did it for free for a bunch of them and from the people that I did it for free for, I got three people to hire me to do it for them. So people want to hear the truth, but sometimes people are unable to do it themselves. So if you put yourself in a position of, I know this thing, um, so come to me for it. So I didn't even have to advertise to them. I just showed them expertise. I just showed them that this is what you're doing wrong. Um, this is how it can be better. But they also realized that, you know, you know this thing more than I do. So why don't I just pay you for it? So that's how we started. Um, I started like that. And eventually, again, I chose to upskill. So I was doing this thing. I was fine with it. I was like one-eyed man in a village full of blind people. And I realized that I was one-eyed. So I started looking for ways to learn. Um, to learn. And that's when I stumbled on an internship with Ingressive for Good. When I got the internship with Ingressive for Good, I was earning like 10 times less than I was earning as a freelancer because as a freelancer I was doing multiple things and then I stepped into Ingressive for Good I thought I could still handle my freelance roles but I couldn't because my focus was learning so that's what I did I learned and learned and you know I started growing up um the ladder and I think that one of the things that impacted the role that I currently am in is who my leader was at the time so I also believe that if my leader was not in communications I may not have entirely gone that route so it was a mistake that I made. So maybe I should also advise you not to make the same mistake. Um, while you're looking up to somebody, also take the time to explore other opportunities and be sure that the path that you're on is the path that you want to be on, right? It's not just the path that is made available to you. Yes, it's fine to use what is available to you, right? Use what you have to get what you want. But don't don't get stuck because you believe that you can go back, right? Explore while you can. Ah, that's so beautiful. Thank you. Thank you so much. Beautiful. Um, someone has, is there any book you can recommend for someone at this level? I don't understand which level. So maybe let's say entry level. Is there any what you can recommend? Book. Any book. Book. Um, I think on one of my slides, this Show Your Work. Um, Show Your Work is a very good book. I think um, if you are into yeah. the level that I am, I mean, I said level. If you're into um the same field as I am or if you're if you're trying to um build a what's it called now I, I don't want to use the word personal brand but if you're trying to build a name for yourself if you're trying to you know be out there read show your work show your work also talks about how to show your work at work so it's not just about what you can do on social media as a freelancer show your work also basically refers to you properly putting yourself out there in your place of work so it's a good book um poke the box i'm, I'm trying to get out of the set Gordon circle but he's a good writer so yes read poke the box as well um poke the box is something on it basically talks about 
how um i think um um i think it would build on you know what i just said about trying to explore right book the book lets you know that okay a plus b equals to c but what if i want to get g should i add a plus c you know it it talks to you about about poking the box and seeing what the box does next right exploring doing different kinds of stuff um can somebody tell me a book that is not written by said gordon because the next book on my mind is purple cow <laughs> purple cow is also by the same writer uh, i think this one should start paying me commission but purple cow talks about um purple cow talks about you standing out right like purple cow have you ever seen a purple cow if you see a purple cow would you ever forget so the book teaches you how to stand out amongst all the other black and white or brown cows. Um, so three books. Yay, thank you so much, Fauzi. I think uh, we're wrapping up with this session. Is there any like uh, final words in 10 seconds? Any final words you'd like to share? Um, what would I like to share? So I think that we've talked about upskilling a lot. Um, just like all of the other speakers have also said, it's very important that you keep showing up. It's very important that you stay consistent. Um, what I would say um, that ties back to upskilling is to stay curious. Um, just like I've said before, I kind of continue as a communications person because you know I've built a, I've built some level of expertise in it. I just continue on the path that was laid down for me. But yes, yeah, stay curious. Continue to try and figure out what you want to do. Um, what if I I'll give an example of one of the Ingressive for Good beneficiaries, um, Paulina. She was into HR, then she learned data analysis with us. And next thing, she was using data as an HR. She was, you know, she 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 carved the niche out for herself. She carved it out for herself at work and became that person at work who was um you know making decisions based on data my point is keep trying to figure out ways to do stuff keep trying to figure out ways to make things easier and faster and you will continue to stand out because people will see you as that problem solver that person that they can run to yeah amazing thank you so much can you give Halsey a beautiful round of applause in the chat uh, thank you so much, Fauzi. Thank you for being here. We really appreciate our uh, guests from Davey White to Treasure, Kelvin, and Fauzi. You'd agree with me that this was, this workshop was super insightful, a lot loaded than even I expected. That was really beautiful. They talked a lot about, I think one thing, my own key takeout is showing your work, putting yourself out there. And I think that is something that you all should encourage should to start doing. I encourage you to start doing it. What about platform you choose? Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, even Facebook, right? Whatever platform you choose to express yourself, express your work, be consistent. I think consistency is the key. Like, you know, we throw the phrase all around. Consistency is the key. Consistency is the key. But we've heard from four different people that consistency is indeed the key. So if you're going to show up twice a week, stay consistent at it. The frequency could increase as you go on, but just start and be consistent with what you are doing. And that's really profound. I just want to share a bit on how you can you know, optimize it. So on LinkedIn, for example, right? So um, when you share content on LinkedIn, you just don't share blindly on LinkedIn. For every role that you apply to, best believe that the recruiter would always check you out on LinkedIn. And when they check you out on LinkedIn, I say LinkedIn, your LinkedIn profile, I used to say that I used to say that your LinkedIn profile is like a mini resume. So you want them to see what they just went through on your CV, right? You want them to see a replica of that on LinkedIn. So if you're applying for a particular role and on LinkedIn they are saying something entirely different, or you are just like very silent on LinkedIn, they'll 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 think that oh maybe you are not really job on you know you're not really putting yourself out there. Except roles that are based on recommendations then they'll probably will not check your LinkedIn. But if you are applying, applying, and your data goes, goes through your CV, so surely check your link, check out your LinkedIn. So on your LinkedIn, key things that you want to put in place is our, our first, your um, profile picture. Ensure that you have um a, a professional picture. Don't use selfie. Don't use an avatar. Don't use a... Don't, 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 don't just leave it blank. Like there are, you can just ask anybody to take you a picture and post it 
and post on uh, and use it as a profile picture rather, right? So, but don't just leave it blank and then use an avatar because I want it to be relatable. I want to feel like I'm talking to a human being, like I'm seeing a human being. This person that I'm about to give a job, I want to put a face to the skills that you said you have, right? And then your um, professional summary, right? Ensure that you have it written out. It does not have to be long like an article, concise and beautiful, and be very intentional about it. Like some is it's just like a mini cover letter of the right. Just write your skills, what you have done in the past, what you can offer, and what you are looking out for. Make it relatable, like if you storytelling into it. Don't just say, I am a dollar for I'm a program manager and contact me or reach reach out to me. I would like to connect with you. Don't leave it blank. Input storytelling, the things that you have done in the past, the things that you're passionate about. Write about it so that when I read it, I will, I will say, Oh, this is, this is a very interesting person. I'd like to schedule an interview with this person. And there is a section for you to highlight the experience as well. Ensure that you highlight the experience. So, experience varies. You might think that you've I've said, I've heard a lot of people say that they don't have, um, they've not done any job. Learning is an experience, volunteering is an experience, right? So, whatever experience you have, leadership, some people have leadership experience. You've led at various capacities, let's say in school or even outside school. You've you've um, anchored um different learning. You've participated different um learning sessions, right? So put it there. Whatever skill you have, whatever you can do, just find a way to communicate it professional. I mean, like I I I strongly feel like the way you talk about what you can do goes a long way. Some people are very shabby in how they introduce themselves, and it is until you. Start digging deeper before you realize that, oh, they're like a ball of gems. But who have the chance to poke into you before you before before they can say that you have so much inside of you? And I think that the more you are conscious enough to put yourself out there, the more you really discover how much you really have and how much you can give, right? So, and when you post content, I think this is the most important part. I go on LinkedIn and I see, I just take out a few people and I be like, oh, let me see what the interactions are doing. Like, I hope you know that. On LinkedIn, I can see what your past engagement is like. And all I'm saying is, congratulations. I mean, like, if you're not looking for a job or if you're not looking to build your network, you can be silent on LinkedIn. But if you're intentional about building your professional network or looking for a job, LinkedIn is that place that you should love, you should love to be, right? So like some people, the only thing they, they have done is to just say, oh, thank you, nice post, congratulations. They have never posted anything on LinkedIn. They have never contributed anything. They have not shared their opinions on any subject matter at all. LinkedIn even has even made it really beautiful that you can um they they you, you can collaborate on a topic, right? Share your opinions on topics and people can upvote on your on your contributions and these things will appear on your profile. So you don't have to know some even if even if you're learning you're learning. Like I told one software developer one time, like okay, you're learning. Maybe you don't know how to do this thing yet. But put this out there, let people see that, oh, this is what I'm currently up to, right? I'm learning, look, I'm trying to, you can just create it. It doesn't have to be an African, I guess. It doesn't have to be 250 words. I'm saying 250 words because when I started writing, right, my 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 boss at the time will always say, write a 250 words one. It is always 250 words. So for, for the longest time, if my post is not long, I don't feel like I've done enough. But recently, I'm learning that, like, it can be just 100 words on something that you're learning, something that you're curious about, like how they mentioned. And you just put it out there. So far is in line with what your interest is. It's would and ask people like in fact a very call to action. Say share your thoughts in the comments or like and share. Share this with someone that you think will find this useful. And stuff like that. And you prompt people to take action. And yeah, I know I've said a couple of things on how you can optimize your profile on LinkedIn. The same thing for all social media platforms. Don't just be shabby about it. See social media as a tool. See it as you want to get something out of social media. Don't just burn your data, <laughs> literally, right? See that, okay, you want to build something out of this. You want this thing to work for me. Treasure mentioned how she's got the opportunities from LinkedIn, from social media, from Twitter, right? And these things are open to, this thing is open to everybody. You can get opportunities from social media. So see it as a tool that you want to work for you. And I think your perspective will change completely about it. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to you um becoming the best version of yourself. I mean, you've heard a lot today. And what I would encourage you, I say, I, I think I've said it three times today. This is the first time I'll be saying it. Create a, a post, right? Share your takeout session from this workshop, right? Share what you learned, which is, which was why I asked to, um, 
have a pen and book right beside you because I know that if you say, oh, I'll come back to listen to the recording. But you feel like, oh, one hour is too long. Ah. But if you've been taking notes right from the start, right, you can easily just convert that to, a, to something that you can post on social media. So post on social media, tag in grocery for good, tag semicolon, tag the speakers. Like I used to say, I, used, I think it's a lot because I've seen it before. And I think grocery for good, once we see a post that is really profound, we just reshare, right? And we give credit, of course. And then this post would have like several likes because, you know, we have, we have a very large community, right? And imagine somebody that you don't even know saying your post and reaching out and liking your post and somebody that you don't even know saying, oh, this is really, this is a really insightful um conversation how would you feel and from there like you you could even start getting followers who knows and it would really even meet your future employee employer anything can happen from there but first start put yourself out there share your take out from this session tag us and we'll share when we see the ones that resonate with us right of course so um again um super thankful to all our amazing speakers super thankful to I4G for organizing this workshop, really, really impactful. And a big thank you to you too. I mean, like if you tuned in from the beginning and you're still here, you should hug yourself. <laughs> hug yourself if you can. Give yourself like a thumbs up. If you can get yourself an ice cream, get yourself an ice cream. Like you've been invested in making your life better, making yourself better, making your career better. And you should not just let it end here. Take it forward and um. We love you. We are proud of you. Always proud of you. And we are continually rooting for you. Shout out to you. You are the best. So thank you, guys. I think on this note, we'll be wrapping this workshop. But like I said, don't let it end here. Have an amazing rest of the day. Bye.